Hey, yeah. what's up? How's everyone doing? Cheers. Hey! <laughs> what up, what up? We were just having a lively conversation yeah, before uh, <laughs> before going on air. Uh, yeah. <laughs> about, uh, Cheers, everybody. Happy Japanese work Friday. ethics and the societal you problems in Japan. <laughs> Yeah. Cheers. What's everyone drinking tonight? Anything <laughs> special? No. The usual. I'm in myself a, nice a margarita. Man. Mm. Nice man. Nice. Yeah, I'm in the mason jar. <laughs> I got nice five dollars. <laughs> I couldn't resist this man. It's like I don't know if you can see it. It's Sapporo, my favorite brand. Beer, beer surprise. It's cool. <laughs> oh, yeah. Beer surprise. Oh, Honestly. The only like surprising thing about it is there is no surprise because it just tastes like beer. So I don't know really what they're talking about, but it says we we created a surprising flavor. <laughs> no, I beer, beer. Flavor. I wasn't that surprised to be honest, but uh, yeah, Dick. actually it's yeah, slightly. Really, you always know what you're gonna get. Yeah, thank you, Sapporo, for surprise <laughs> surprising me or not <laughs> surprising me with <laughs> with your beer. Okay, let's get. <laughs> Let's do the housekeeping. Like and subscribe. Blah 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 blah. Let's see if anyone's. It's gone now. <laughs> I hate doing that. Let's see if anyone's watching. Someone is. I can see the blue dot. There we go. Hey hey. Cheers, everyone. Cheers. Anyone? <laughs> anyone gonna? <laughs> no, Daniel. Maybe the chisel for your. <laughs> Just for you. <laughs> I thought about it. I was like, hmm, boy, what oy record should I pull out? Maybe not tonight. Business, no, not tonight. Not, not tonight. Actually, no, I haven't got any way to actually. There you go. Who's singing in the business now? That's a good question. It's not Mickey Fitz, obviously. Are they playing? I think, didn't, didn't they do some shows like without Mickey Fitz? Really? I think so. That's wild. Hey, they, it could be like Lars Friedrichsen. Or something. <laughs> <laughs> I like he plays in the last resort, so I wouldn't, you know, nothing, nothing's off the table with this stuff. Yeah. Okay. Does he really? Cool. I didn't. Know yes. That. So I, I, I call him the Lars Resort. Wow. <laughs> Boo. <laughs> he, he plays in uh, Stomper '98, I think. Also. Oh my God, like the mil the billionaire. Street fighter from the East End of London that he is. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> yeah. Lars Fredrickson was in the UK subs though when he was. He like, was when he was young, right? Yeah, when he, he was, was like, young. Apparently, yeah. like he was a bit feisty and like Charlie and him didn't get along too well at the time. Wow. Oh, he didn't get along with the sixteen-year-old. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> anyway, enough about Oi. Let's get on with the show. <laughs> Kevin's back. Dan's back. Jess back bunch of veterans tonight it's gonna to be a good show i got some good picks tonight i'm quite i'm quite confident about, about that like nice yeah. so should, should we uh, should we get going let's uh, let's uh, let's do this so i think dan the first time you were on i'm pretty sure it was you 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 showed this right the oh yeah uh, fuck yeah screaming death Call yeah man this is not my pick. I'm just kind of, it's kind of leading into my, my pick, but it's like, and maybe like to remind people, if there's anyone out there who hasn't bought this yet, what are you doing? Yeah. Wasting your life by the Screaming Death compilation that came out last year. Do you uh, have the poster on the inside of that? Dude, I, that thing's I fucking sick, man. It has, a, it has a spelling mistake on it, I noticed. Oh, okay. <laughs> right? <laughs> Shh. I didn't notice until I, until I saw Patrick talking about it, and I was like, "Really? I didn't notice." Neither did we. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, "Really?" So I, I kind of uh, pulled it out, and I couldn't find it for ages because it, anyway, it's discarded. Right, has it's missing a chaos. Anyway, so I think when so Dan had showed that, and then when Jeff came on, I'm pretty sure it was Jeff that I asked, uh, "Was this record an in, an inspiration?" for screaming death i think it, i asked you right it absolutely was yeah it, and you said yes right so that got me to thinking yeah. uh this is the, the classic like four band format right four band uh compilation this one being like a japanese one right and i got to thinking there are some other 
classic like Japanese like four band uh, compilation albums. I'm going to show them all. <laughs> like Hell super yeah. quickly. <laughs> I, I'm actually missing a really a, a really crucial one, and, let, and let, let's see if anyone can re- kind of spot which one I'm missing. But I'm going to go through them like super quick, and then maybe we'll like we'll pick one, that, and then that'll be my official pick. The one that we all like the best. All right. So I've got, I think I've got four or five. <laughs> so this is a new angle to the show that hasn't been done before. So we've got like the, the game of death. Oh, hell yeah. That one's cool. Oh, yeah. This is a That's good one, right? Selfish, guess, right? Selfish records. No, it's actually Slice records, but it's Slice, yeah. It looks like it could be Selfish records, right? It's Death Side, Poison Arts, Ghoul, and Final Bombs. But like Death Side, man, they always like bring their A game to all these like. These compilations, like always, it's amazing. So, Game of Death is a good one. Uh, so, uh, it's, it's a good one. It's a good one. And then this one is not so good. <laughs> I'm gonna say, Fear. This is the like Osaka area one with uh, oh, rapes, yeah. and, oh, rapes and dance yeah. macabre and the Griffin. Yeah. It's decent, but I don't think it's quite up there with uh, Game of Death. Was the last yeah. one KGGM? KGGM suck, man. Yeah, I don't like. It. <laughs> so, I'm just, just saying. Uh, <laughs> but the thing about this, like, it's got Rape's best songs on it, and it's got the Dance Macabre songs are good, but they decided to put their cover of Born to Be Wild on there, which also. Kind of <laughs> stuff, but it's decent. It's decent. It's decent. This one might be a little bit more obscure. This one is on Selfish. It's also got Poison Arts on it. This is the Attack of Four Tribes. Yeah. Fuck yeah. This one, I'm a fan of. This is like more metal-y, and there's a band called 666 Triangle of Death on here, whose songs are like rip, like Venom and Motet. So if you haven't... This this is worth buying for 666. Uh, 666 songs, I want to say. Okay. Then, yes, Diego, you beat me to it. Diego guessed what my next one is going to be. This one. Yes. Fuck Get yeah. back the that Discharged Arrow. This probably might be the pick of the day. Cruck, Acid, Mad, Conflux. A mess that we talked about last week, right? All the other, yeah. all the, other the last time you were on down. This last is like, like, this isn't like an all timer uh, for me. Also, like, those Cruck records. tracks are fucking sick, too. Oh, man. man like, cr- I was complaining the other day that I don't want, I don't want Acid to be on here. I want another, <laughs> another band to be on <laughs> here. <laughs> yeah. I feel yeah. that, too. And someone said Pile Driver, which I thought was a really good. Uh, Oh yeah, dude. Fucking good, good, good suggestion. Obviously, we can't do that. Uh, we're stuck. We're stuck with, with acid. And then there's one more that only came out on CD. But this one, I don't know, man. This one, this one could be the pick. I know. Dude, you said no CDs. Ah, uh-uh, wait. <laughs> I have a bootleg vinyl version. Ah, shit. <laughs> Here comes Mike with the boot. The boot. The Women's Liberation <laughs> Comp from Dude. Yes. 1991. This thing oh, is, a, oh man, it's four all girl, all female bands, and all of the bands rip. Wormcast, Gaia, Gush, and Piss. This thing fucking rips, and it's never been properly reissued on uh, vinyl. So I got this shit bootleg of it. But, yeah. FOADs on it, I'm sure. Yeah, you know what? It's something that, that I feel that they should be working on rather than like other stuff. <laughs> but uh, you know, so what? Are, what are we going for? You reckon? What do you What do you reckon? Get back the discharge arrow. Yeah, I mean, out of like, yeah, that's yeah, probably my favorite one out of all those. That, actually, that, actually that that last record that you showed, I just got turned on to that by a buddy of mine, Dave. Mm. He was saying, uh, I think it was like Wormcast or or maybe even Piss reminded of a of like Death Side, like like an all girl death side. So yeah, exactly. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, it's, it, this is great. Women's yeah, liberation. Cool the, the CD is, was on selfish records, like 1991. I but think the I, artwork is done by Sugi as well too, right? It's, it's real old, like Sugi. It's real primitive. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think that's yeah. cool though. I really like, you know, how his old style was and like, you can look yeah. back to that and see how it compares. I think yeah. it's fucking really interesting. It's cool. Yeah, yeah. The original is like full color on the CD, but... Uh, yeah. Yeah. All right. So this is my first pick. <laughs> my first pick of the day. Get Fuck back. Yeah. Discharged Arrow. Selfish yeah. Records. Nice. Didn't you say that there we were missing one? Like a four... Yeah. Did anyone pick up the one that I was missing? My Meets guess... Your Poison? 
No, because that's no, got that's, that's, got six, that's got six bands on it, right? Six, yeah. yeah. Is yeah. it the one with Warhead and DSB and? Oh, that's another one. I think that yeah. could have been in there. Yeah, I was thinking of uh, Hang the Sucker. Hang the Sucker. Oh yeah, Hang the Sucker, dude. Two, mm. volume two with Death Side, Half Years, Gudon, Mad Conflux. I don't have that one, but uh, yeah. So. There you go, Jeff. Oh, yeah. That got me thinking about other like classic, you know, Japanese four band comps. There's a lot of them, right? Yeah, yeah, that uh, Fuck, yeah. women's liberation one sounds really cool. Like, I think I've heard that uh, that Gaia band before, but I don't know if I know any of those other bands. The Gaia toured the states. I think Ken Prank did that, and they have like a couple of full length albums yeah, out. They have a full length album out on like six weeks records, maybe, and some seven inches too. So those okay. records are easy to get. The Gaia records are easy to get. Um, but that women's liberation man, check it out. It'll kind of blow you away if you've never heard it before it's amazing oh yeah that's yeah. sick yeah definitely will all right that's my first pick thanks for choosing <laughs> thanks for choosing my first <laughs> my first pick. <laughs> <laughs> all right kevin what's your what's your first pick all right this hey i forgot to ask you are our tapes cool or yeah cool okay. cool cool, cool. But first is a record. Okay. Um, okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's a record um, from Mexico. Cool. Um, and it's 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 funny because I've had this record already for for some time, but I've upgraded it. I don't think I've ever upgraded anything else, like you know, because I really don't care for the most part. But I've this is the fourth copy I think I've had. Um, it's uh, this band called Yaps. Oh, y -A -P -S. yeah, well, this is their LP, um, the Sententia, and um, yeah, it, it came out in 1990. I don't even know what fucking label that is, I don't know, nothing I've really heard of, but um, yeah, it's a, it's a trip because I mean, I feel like this people know if they see the seven inch, they'll probably know the band, mm -hmm. um, and be like, oh, yaps, yeah, I've seen that, it's like kind of Ramonesy style punk um from mexico it's kind of it's kind of the recording's a little tripped out um their timing is a little crazy <laughs> but yeah this this wasn't on cintas uh denver though this is on producciones pac okay yeah so some random fucking label and so the first record the time i had this record the record was super fucked up and like with skip <laughs> electricity and i was like all right this sucks you know i can't listen to it <laughs> and then i got another copy that um the record was good but the cover was fuck was fucked like pretty beat the fuck up um and even for like mexico standards you know <laughs> <laughs> i was able to replace that and then i was able to find one uh I, with an insert but the insert was photocopied <laughs> <laughs> and now I have struggle is one, real man <laughs> i have one that plays Fucking good. <laughs> that has the OG insert, you know, yeah. or insert, insert, and the cop, the copy's fucking, the cover's clean. Hell we yeah. fucking did it. You did you it. Know? Hell <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Fuck yeah, man. Hell yeah. So it made me feel super good. <laughs> Cheers. But um, yeah, for real, this fucking record rules. It's super cool. It's super fun. They do a cover of um. The Ramones, um, the KKK took my baby away, but they sing it in Spanish. It's fucking so cool, and it's like the timing is like really strange on it and unique. And I don't, all the songs are super fun, and it's fucking punk as fuck. And it's cool because like it really stood out. I feel like compared to everything else that was happening in Mexico, mm -hmm. like 1990, that's like xenophobia, like massacres, uh, since like 68 and shit, and um, you know, like. A toxic, like it was more like rough and gruff and you know punk spiky hair shit mm -hmm. and this was like on a different on a different tip that's cool yeah i've got that one with the white cover and the band photo on it. i think it might be like a radiation reissues kind oh of yeah they, they just did a um they did a reissue um that has the seven inch i don't know if it has lp it might have the lp too mm. they did a bunch of stuff still after that some of it was still cool but eventually it got like like kind of hardcore almost street punk 
Uh, it sucked. It was the, like, honestly, like, fucking yaps. They used to rule, man. But now they're just like, <laughs> they play like fast. Like, play like, now. <laughs> you know, and it's, they lost the, like, Ramonzi touch. And I don't know. It's, it's not the same. That's funny. I remember, like, listening to that when I was talking about it. Right? You're totally, it's like, the timing and everything. It's all over the place. It's great. It's great. Yeah. Uh, it's cool. Yeah. If you guys see that, there's two that came out, like, at the I, almost at the exact same time. There's, like, two compilation things mm-hmm. i don't i don't i don't know which ones are what's what has what but i'm tempting to like have, bend down and grab it but i really won't do that but uh, yeah. yeah it's cool it was cool to get like that stuff but i think it's a radiation reshoot yeah the, yeah radiation did one that, that's white and then there's that's also right, yeah. one that's like black okay and i don't know what the fuck is on that right right yeah, yeah. you gotta get it yeah fuck yeah yeah that's my first pick that's a beautiful story yeah <laughs> Uh, the yaps from mexico <laughs> hey all right dan what's your what's your first pick cool. man? all right um i just got a couple of records in from um unlawful assembly and i fucking love that label leo is fucking working really hard and putting out some fucking killer shit this record that just dropped is a it's a co-release with roach leg i believe mm. but i'm the this fucking record, I have not been able to stop listening to it because I fucking love it so much. But Desi didn't uh, Desi didn't. Uh, <laughs> I can't talk right now. I've been drinking. Desi <laughs> the on Violenta. Yeah. But I believe they're from, um, the singer is Colombian. And I don't know where the rest of the members are. They're actually based out of Europe. Uh, but this Berlin. fucking record, like, there's a lot of metal punk going on right now. Like, you know, you got your bands like Zorn and like Night Circle and, uh, you know, like Devil Master, of course, and shit like that. But this hits on a different level, though. This shit's like, it's kind of got like more of a raw punk feel to it. Definitely like some fucking, uh, I'm going to say some like first wave black metal vibes, like Hellhammer kind of shit. But this this fucking record rips. Oh, cool. And I, I was a huge fan of the first one that came out. Um, and like... What actually drew me to that was like there was like a fucking cobra and a dude on a motorcycle on the cover on the first one. So instantly I was like, dude, I got fucking <laughs> yeah, that was cool as fuck. And so like so Texan dog. <laughs> exactly. I was like, dude, this is right up my alley. I like cobras, I like fucking motorcycles and fire and shit. So like I got this one as soon as it drops. It's fucking awesome. And it sounds like they actually got, you know, like they weren't doing anything wrong. I love the first one. But they they got better. Like they fucking their song structures are are better. Their fucking their solos, everything is like fucking crazy. And like the vocals are kind of like wow. really depraved. There's like some laughter in some of the tracks. It's like ah ha, 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 and that kind of crazy <laughs> shit. So it's really fucking wow. fun record to listen to. But it's sick, fucking metal punk shit. It's hitting on a different vibe than a lot of shit that's out right now. Definitely recommend it. And plus like. I back fucking unlawful and roach leg. Everything they put out is fucking pretty solid. So like this fucking shit, I've not been able to stop listening to it. It's sick, really good. Fuck yeah, yeah, nice. That's my first. Nice. Yeah, I like that label, uh, unlawful assembly. I think it's cool. What they're yeah, doing. man. Like Leo is cool. Doing out too. there too. And have like, you gone yeah. out there? Nah, man. Dude, yeah, <laughs> you should. It's really cool because like yeah. we. We went on a tour with Salvaje Punk, Get Off and Alden, and like um, Leo took us to the bar and shit, and we we're just walking around the town, and uh, he put like flyers of the show just everywhere, it was, like all over the town. So I was like, wow. that's really fucking cool. Appreciate the hard work. So, like, uh, Milwaukee, is that where they're based at? Yeah, Milwaukee. Yeah. And it's cool because like yeah. uh, a lot of those bands. Yeah, I think I saw members too, but they're all sick as fuck. Oh, go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead, Jeff. Oh, uh, I, yeah, I have delay. It's weird. Uh, it's like, <laughs> yeah. uh, I'm pretty sure I saw footage of that or whatever, but it looks like people were just like, bands were just like playing like in the middle of the fucking street. It looked fucking crazy. Yeah. Nice one. Oh, yeah. Sick. Yeah, I haven't heard that, but I all the bands that you kind of compare them to, I, I really like. So, yeah. Yeah, it's pretty unique, I think. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I think that's that. 
Yeah, cool. definitely. I wish they would come to the states too. Um, not sure if they ever have, but I'd I'd love I'd love to see them live. I've seen like videos of them on YouTube. Mm. I think there was like a video of them playing a wedding or something. <laughs> but they look fucking sick though. They look really. They look like a lot of fun. Nice. All right. Oh yeah. All right, Jeff. What's your What's your first pick? All right. So I guess like as I'm talking, like your reactions are going to be like so delayed, but that might be kind of weird, but whatever. I'll just go for it. Anyway. We can really so, uh, fuck you. Um, I don't know. I'm going to buy a whole lot of, uh, say what? <laughs> oh, sorry. Carry All right. Carry <laughs> uh, so I, I've been buying like a whole lot of new records lately, unfortunately, but uh, I guess what I've sort of been doing is just like, revisiting like DIY punk and hardcore stuff that I like loved when I was like first getting into it. And um, mm. so I kind of have like a theme today um, and like, I don't know, it might be kind of like a little bit different or whatever, but uh, so in Scandinavia in the two thousands, um, I hear a lot of people like talking about uh, Omdi Peterson's army. Like I even hear like younger people talk about that band now and sort of like give their little tip of the hat. And I think it's kind of accepted that like that band is like loved and stuff, you know, um, which is mm -hmm. great. Um, but I feel like one band from that same era that I don't hear people talking about as much as this band, uh, young wasteners, young wasteners. Yeah. Um, and I think like, uh, I don't know, like, I think it's even like some of the same people as Omdi Peterson's army, but, uh, if like Omdi Peterson's army was sort of like 82 onward, like fast kind of, like early 80s hardcore this is like sort of like 80 81 la you know and like and it's just weird because it's like these dudes like from that region of scandinavia in copenhagen or whatever like just like sort of like loving la hardcore so much and like just doing like it's it's kind of like amazing how good of a job they do like sort of embodying that style in a way that's like not corny either it's like it's like my man saw fucking Casey Royer from DI wearing like a yeah. red beret and he was just like, that's the shit. what I'm doing. You know, like, it's funny. I didn't even plan this, but like their logo, it's like, it's like clearly like ripping, you know, the fucking Wasted Youth logo off. It is, man. Going, um, it is. You're wearing yeah. a t-shirt too. It's funny. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I didn't even, I, I promise I didn't plan that. A theme um, within but, a theme. Uh, <laughs> like, it's, it's funny. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but, but it's funny because um, there's this one YouTube clip of them that's actually like pretty good quality that is surely like recorded when they were like super active or whatever. And it almost looks like their tribute to like a target video kind of thing or whatever. And it's like a, like a sound stage and they're, it's decorated with like the Screamers logo everywhere. And wow. uh, I, <laughs> it's just funny, man. I, it's like, I wonder if they even understood at the time, like how fucking cool they looked. Like seriously, like dudes wearing like bondage pants and like fucking like shit like this, but all the way up their forearms and like <laughs> you know they're probably like nineteen or twenty years old. They, they, like every member of the band has a black flag tattoo, and it's like it's Copenhagen. Like I don't know. I mean, like surely people in Copenhagen like black flag, you know. But like I just think yeah. it's it's just funny because like like they watch like Decline of Western Civilization. Clearly, there's like a song on this. Um, uh, Siren Symphony, where like the first line is "I hate cops to the max," and like clearly they're referencing like that sketchy kid with the swastika in the movie who's like oh, "I hate cops to the max" or whatever, you know. Um, but it's like, but the thing is, it's like the record sounds amazing, and also like it's not like the songs are just like nervous breakdown over and over and over. It's like they write really good like vocal melodies that you can sing along with. And also it seems like they're kind of like, you know, adventurous. Like it's sort of like the tempos kind of change. And it seems like they were probably into like, like danger house singles. There's like a song with fucking saxophone on it. And like, when I think about like sort of like 2000s hardcore in the U S it was like that whole Y2K thrash. It was basically like tough hardcore with blast beats. And it's hard to imagine like any bands from that era in the U S like, you know, writing catchy songs that had saxophone on them. It's just like, it just wasn't happening anywhere else. So as much as this is like sort of like loving tribute to that era of like LA punk, it's like, it's also like sort of unique in its own way. And I just, I don't know. I come back to this record all the time. So anyway, Hell that's yeah. my first pick. Hell, okay. And uh, regulations also were fucking 
Denmark was on fire yeah, like, at that point, Dude, right? Yeah. That band uh, yeah. Hull, H U L, that record is amazing as well. I think I think they're from Denmark. Yeah. 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 I think so. What is that? Kick and Punch Records? Kick and Punch, yes. Yeah. Fucking all yeah. those bands are sick. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know what was going on in Denmark at, in that time, but man, there were so many good mm. bands. Crazy. I remember That's too, like, like uh, yeah, what's sure. didn't somebody like uh, a couple of episodes ago? Uh, weren't they discussing like uh, asbest? Asbest, um, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I was like, yeah. I remember like after the episode, oh, I went yeah. back and listened to like some asbest and like some fucking hair, uh, hair they stop and. That's a, that's another great one. Yeah. Yeah 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 yeah, 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 yeah. Looking great bands. Yeah, so like, like for sure, like. Uh, for sure, Lasse, who is in this band, Namdi Peterson's Army, was in his Jurte stop too. I'm pretty sure. Oh wow! Oh, fuck cool. yeah, that's awesome. They, they played in Santa Ana at the, it's called the Clinic. Yeah. Oh, sick! Wow. Yeah. yeah. That's awesome. that's awesome, dude. Yeah, they played in uh, they played in da- or in Denton too, like um, you know where Mark Men are from. So like, saw Jurte stop there. That was fucking awesome. Yeah, yeah. They, great show, man. Great yeah, they're great band too. Yeah. yeah. I saw Gorilla Rangrab in, in Osaka and they were fucking amazing. Bit bit different, but uh Yeah. So, so many great bands from Denmark. Yeah, more melodic, but like Yeah, but X yeah, X, just, they were kind of yeah, doing the X. So many thing, good right? ones. Yeah. You know what I, uh that band Ice Age, they fucked it all up, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh god, sorry, that was funnier than <laughs> <laughs> hey, <let's> think about it. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. Cheers. That was a that was a great fun. I'm gonna change the order of my picks because I've got something from Denmark. So I'm gonna I'm gonna jump into cheers. I'm gonna jump into oh, cool. Yeah, it's new. It's new. And I don't know. I I okay. I don't know if he, you guys maybe I'm like paranoid or I, I overthink things. I'm like I've been really having a good time with this record and i've seen people also saying that they have been having a good time with it and uh sorry daniel uh daniel uh daniel kind of agrees with uh kevin uh, (laughs) (laughs) sentiments uh, (laughs) yeah so i've been having a good time with this record and i i friends of mine in europe are also have, have also been having a good time with it but i'm like I don't, man. I don't know if any, you know, I don't know if any everyone's gonna like 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 this record as much as uh, as I do. But it's like their third LP, I think, from K Town, Copenhagen, Denmark, right? K Town Bound it band. It's their third mm-hmm. record. They had a split album out with uh, Harder Ty- Harder Tida, who are from, are they from Denmark or Sweden? I don't remember. But uh, um, they Sweden. may or yeah, and they may or may not have been named after a BG song. So, it's the name of this band, right? Mm. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. That's, that's not really oh, a BG's yeah. reference, man. <laughs> man, I don't man. I like this record. Night Fever, Dead End. It's just come out. It's like on Svart Records. Okay. I suppose you want me to describe it, right? <laughs> so, I, 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 first of all, we have to like separate the vocals and the music because they're so different to each other. But, but like Mm -hmm. (laughs) somehow for me, it kind of works, but I I really imagine that some people be like, Oh God, I can't stand this. So the vocals are kind of like youth crew, like 88 style, like higher register uh, for the most part. But then every now and again, He'll kind of go into more of like a rock, a rock and roll kind of style with the melodies and stuff, like a helicopters or Zeke or something like that. Oh, so you've got like these kind of like, like youth crew vocals from this Danish guy, and then like the music is like really like metal, like but like kind of like I don't know, man. It's like the label really described this record weird. It's like it's like furious, like K Town hardcore mixed with your favorite like new wave of british heavy metal bands and i love new wave british heavy metal and i'm not an expert but i know quite a lot of, a lot of oh, new wave of british heavy metal bands and i'm like i i'm not hearing anything i recognize you know on this record uh it sounds more like, like an 80s priest man like 
like the oh, George wow. bars, like the, the guitar the tones. Fuck? I was like, man, this is like more. It's like it's like Judas Priest with like Lou from Sick of It All like, singing. This <laughs> Holy shit! It's, it's, a, it's a fantasy that. band, right? <laughs> <laughs> is it is it skinhead related? I can't no, tell. no, no, which is a bonus. Um, but they, I don't know, like the cover is like a bit, you know, they're in the back alley in wherever that is. That photo yeah. was taken, but man, it's funny because like I was thinking, man, it's like Judas Priest, and when I, I'm not going to get it out, there's a massive poster inside, and it's like band shot. And like both guitarists are wearing Judas Priest t shirts. So, like, my, I was right. So, it was like, yeah, it's like, uh, you know, screaming for, like, screaming for screaming vengeance, for vengeance. Yeah. guitar tone, and then like youth crew, <laughs> like vocals on top. So, that's what that's what we're getting out of Denmark in, in 2000. <laughs> <laughs> but people love this record, man. Like, I've seen loads of people saying, like, they're having a good time with it. Show the poster, okay. Yeah. I'll yeah, show the poster. Show I, I can do that. I can, I can show the poster. <laughs> Are you ready? <laughs> so, yeah. There we go. Oh, shit. That's pretty clean. Yeah. Judas Priest t-shirt. Yeah. Judas Priest t-shirt. Yeah. White Adidas trainers. Well. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to sing it. I'm going to sing it. <laughs> That kind of this poster actually kind of sums up <laughs> it better than my description. Like, <laughs> yeah. It looked more metal than I thought. Yeah, it's not it that seems... metal, and every now and again it does have like a bit of a helicopter. I mean, the band, you know? the, the songs are super catchy. I know, man. I'm a beer drinker. I've been I've been having a good time with this record, like after a few beers. But uh, fuck yeah, you can uh, you can. <laughs> it's on YouTube, so you can like decide. But uh, I don't know if it's going to make my top ten of the year. But it, man, you it's, know. Jeff, uh, it, it's funny because like I feel like uh, the band, um, you know, it's it's weird. There's like they had another record like over ten years ago or something like that. So it's funny that they have like a new one out now. It's been a you know, while. They yeah. uh, they played in Raleigh. Oh really? They played in Raleigh. Yeah, and the and they only had one guitar player at the time, I think. But the guitar okay. player, like everybody else, looked punk. But the guitar player had like long ass hair, and he had like a battle vest with like a patch. Like patches took up the entire fucking thing, you know. So I was just like, this is a weird sort of, you know, like juxtaposition yeah. of the band members. Or kind of, it kind of sums up the band. It's kind They're of really like good, unique, yeah. it's kind of like a new, like a unique sound that they've got going on, and. uh you, I think it's going to be like a real like mom. Okay, like, yeah. you're going to love this, or you're going to like you're not. You're going to hate this kind of band. But uh, I don't know. Interesting, interesting stuff. Hell yeah! Straight edge Judas know. Priest. That, <laughs> it sounds interesting. The vocals it's are interesting. interesting. Yeah, yeah. I'm glad. I, I'm glad yeah. you showed something from Denmark so we could like contra, like do wow. some contrast and stuff. But uh, yeah, Night Fever. Yeah. The, the vocals get a little rough for me. That's the, the what you know. The the logo. The vocals get a little rough. That's, that's they're in the vocals. higher register. Um, like, yes. It's a little, a little rough little, sometimes. But. Some of the vocal melodies are like, yeah. <laughs> it's a, you know, like I said, it's a, it's a straight edge guy trying to be King Diamond or Bob Alf. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly, yeah. <laughs> All right. Let's move okay. on. All right. Kevin, what's your next pick? Take right. my next pick is a cassette. There you go. Now that I know the rules, no CDs. No CDs. Although Patrick, he's a bad boy. He shared a CD. <laughs> I haven't seen that episode, man. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, it's all right. Excuse me. It's all right. Hey, no, boot, we, boot to the CD. No lie, boot. you guys had CDs. Like, <laughs> shut, the, shut up. You guys had yeah. CDs. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, this is a tape. Um, I got it recently, along with everything else that they put out. I've been, uh, it's a label from out of Austin or all, you know, Austin, whatever the, where people live. I don't know, out there, Boston. But um, these foods are pretty cool. They're called um, The Massacred. Oh, fuck yeah! Yeah, Great it's man. it's really sick. Um, my friend Josh, who uh, used to live in the Bay, um, I met him a while a while back, and he sings in this band. And um, 
the guitarist also plays in Savage Heads. Um, nice. And yeah, that kind of gives you a, a, well, my my friend sings and he sings in like a, he has a really good voice, I think, for this type of music. Cause it's kind of like UK 82, mm -hmm. but it's on the heavier side, you know? You can and tell by the name, right? It just, it just. You can tell, yeah. 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 Uh, yeah, this one's called A Look Into the Bowels of Hell. And it's like some dude looking in some other dude's ass. <laughs> <You know? laughs> it's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. And I really like tapes. And I think it's cool that they do, um, they, you know, that they're that this is a tape. And this label does a bunch of tapes, too. Um, I think more cassettes than they do vinyl. And I think it's fucking cool. Uh, they dropped this along with like a, a Savage Heads and this other band called um, ICD, maybe? I don't know. Oh, okay. uh, I think someone showed ICD a tape, yeah. I think, on, the, on this yeah, show. Yeah, now all the bands that they put out are sick, too. Like, it's, it's fucking sick. These people uh, are putting out really cool shit. And um, this one, this is a cool like compilation. It has demo tracks for a new LP that's coming out, which I think is fucking sick you know, to do some shit like that. Um, tracks from a, an EP, the Death March EP, and then some live stuff. So it's it serves the purpose of the tape as well, you know? Mm -hmm. And I think that's fucking cool. And it's like, um, and it's fucking good. They're fucking sick. Uh, they're really cool. Like I said, a heavier side of UK, like 82 mm -hmm. era stuff. Um, you know, but they, they fucking do it really well. And the songwriting I think is, is strong mm -hmm. and I appreciate that shit. I think it's fucking cool and it's, it's fucking punk, you know? Yeah. Get this shit if you see it and everything man, the, the label puts out is cool. About that band, uh... Oh, Jeff, go ahead. You, go I was ahead. just going to say, it's funny. <laughs> a friend of mine said uh, like that the guitar playing like sounds like head cleaners a little bit. And like, since I heard that, I was like, oh dude, I totally hear it. You know? Yeah. A little bit, huh? Yeah. I never, I never thought about it. Wow, Look at this. Okay, yeah. <laughs> that's a fucking. That's a good, like little fucking lyric layout. That's they did. a nice spread. Yeah, nice spread. There you go. <laughs> dude, that's sick, dude. Yeah. I fucking love that band, man, so much. They put in, uh, they put in a lot of work to make their ship sick, and I back it. And I feel like more people need to check it out or something. I don't know, like. I know yeah. they're not like super big on like social media and shit, mm. but I feel like they need more eyes on it. Was I think that one put out by was that one put out by Activate Records? Yeah, Activate. Sorry, I didn't even yeah. fucking mention them. Yeah, it's Activate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think it's sick. They're doing shit kind of old school way and I don't know. Stoked. Yeah. yeah that that fucking label's sick. And I got to meet the the dude that runs that label and it's basically ran out of like kind of like in the jam studio. Like we played a show in a jam studio. It was in like this fucking heavy industrial area. There's like people fucking welding. No, I'm not that heavy. Sorry. <laughs> 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 the massacre, yeah. Yeah. But dude, fucking yeah, that 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 label's sick as fuck. The massacre are sick as fuck. Too, yeah, it, it is good work, dude. Man, I love that. Like, as you said, like the heavier side of UK UK eighty two, like the heavier side of anarcho punk. I love all that. that yeah, fuck yeah, yeah, yeah. It's cool. I mean, I consider it UK eighty two, but it's probably you know like, but bands are probably sounding like that later. Mm -hmm. I don't really know. Fuck yeah. Uh, do they have yeah, an LP? Do they have an LP out yet? Not yet, right? No, they have a seven inch that came out. I, I think it's still available. You should you guys should just go check out activate. Mm -hmm. Um it's active dash eight. Okay. Put that shit out. Uh yeah. Yeah, ultraviolet. That's true. That's true. <laughs> yeah, that's the first thing that kind of came came to mind. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Nice, 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 nice. All, All right. right. Dan, what you, what you All want? right. I'm gonna keep on this fucking um this this unlawful assembly shit. This is another one that dropped same fucking time, and this shit is like, uh, it's also a co-release with Roach, like I believe, but mm. or maybe not. I'm not sure. I'm not, I don't know. I just got this shit inside. I haven't had a whole lot of time to look at it, but I've had a lot of time to listen to it. This shit, this LP by Innuendo, is fucking badass. Like, 
it's it's just hardcore in the sense of like mid paced mm. uh hardcore punk it's like very 80s influenced um this is a fucking record you just play fucking loud you just throw it on and just destroy your fucking house you know your living room moss record you know it's like it, it hits on the same kind of like mid pace kind of like um i don't think it really reminds me of fucked up but it kind of like hits that same area of like really mid pace driving fucking cool punk songs like and, early um, fucked up, right yeah early fucked up but like the the delivery like on the songs the songs are fucking simple but really fucking cool and the vocals are just little, like real gruff and guttural it just you know really makes it just sounds really fucking cool man reminds me like a little bit almost like of like i would say like um negative approach at times but uh definitely on that kind of real visceral like you know fucking just stompy fucking nice kind of like rock rock and roll style mid pace fucking punk riffs mm -mm. it's just punk as fuck it's one of those fucking like i said you just throw it on play loud and just wreck shit it's really fun <laughs> those are those midwest fools also right yeah yeah actually yeah. leo that runs on unlawful plays yeah. in this band as well Okay, you know so, what? All that shit. They have really good recordings, honestly. Too. They do a really yeah, good yeah, yeah. So like, there's uh, that's the cool thing about uh, about Milwaukee too is they all they all have like it's kind of a smaller scene, but all their bands are fucking insanely good. Like Necron Nine, uh, you know, like uh, Organism, Innuendo, uh, all those fucking bands. They just rule. They're all fucking. They play with a lot of heart, you know, and they're all younger kids too. So they just and they fucking rip too. They're all those bands are just fucking insanely good live too. So mm. ever get a chance to catch any of those bands, do it because they're fucking sick. But not um, other than that, not a whole lot of, to say about this record than it's fucking good shit. And it's new too, right? Just came yeah, out. Yeah, just came out. Like uh, I want to say, like this month. So. Yeah, I was like, I didn't really have like a whole lot new. So like, um, I had a little bit of money saved up for my birthday stash. So I was like, fuck it, I'm gonna buy a couple records. And uh, those are the two I got. And I was like, fuck, dude, these are excellent. Nice one. <laughs> Hell yeah. They yeah, haven't checked out that innuendo yet, though. Me neither. It sounds, yeah. it sounds sick. Yeah. Real good shit. Nice. One, of the, one, of like those fools, one of those fools um, I know likes Bad Religion, and I'm like, you know. <laughs> you you know, know fuck with that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's a good sign when you, honestly, to me, I don't know. but I'm with you, man. I feel like that they're, they're interested in writing, like, they're interested in writing, like, catchy, memorable songs, right? Yeah. That, that's what. It's, that, a good, it's a good influence to have. I, I, I'd, say, I'd say so, yeah. I think so. Well, well, to a certain like, yeah, yeah, you know, what I'm early, early, early battle right? <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> even, even well, you if kids are just like, oh, I'm like, I don't know any words. You know? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Jeff, just speak whenever you want to speak. Like, just go, go ahead, man. <laughs> I'm, dude, I'm trying. Like, it's like it's so awkward to me to just like sit here and y'all are silent for a second. <laughs> Whatever. Maybe we are silent. <laughs> I know. Jeff, you got sick ass hair, man. Uh, yeah, that's all that matters. <laughs> thanks. Hell that's yeah. Nice thing you said to me. <laughs> there we go. We've got some massacre. All right. Ma massacre. The mass the massacre. The massacre, right? Yeah, the massacre. The massacre. Yeah. All yeah. right. Beautiful man. <laughs> all right jeff it's your turn all right so <laughs> in scandinavia the 2000s there's a theme that's um, developing here <laughs> to continue with the theme <laughs> so you know I, I think daniel's watching and uh so this is kind of like you know just to give him a little shout out or whatever my next pick um this is like a pretty early release on sorry stage this band uh Instanged. I have no idea if that's oh, how you properly cool. pronounce it. I'm like Instang, dude. Like I've I have no idea. Yeah. Like um, this was like pretty early release on Sorry State and uh, oh wow. And like the thing is, they have three EPs and um, 
I, I, I hate to say it as he's watching, but this, this is not my favorite one. <laughs> this, uh, yeah. this one. He's, he's not watching actually, anymore. This <laughs> one. And this, <laughs> yeah right and then uh this this one came out on adult crash i think it's just i think it's a label based out of uh copenhagen yeah but that's, um, one, of, that's one of the other like, great they, labels they right? like yeah. i was just gonna say like yeah they they've like put out records that i've just like consistently liked for years and years and years you know yeah. um but uh this band is from um umio which i think is like sort of like one of the most northern cities in sweden and um, yeah. it's like the same place where like the vicious and regulations are from. Yes, that's and, right. Uh, yeah. And also like refused. refused. And funny enough, yeah. this band, it's like it this band, it's a uh, Dennis from Refused, who does vocals and refused, plays drums in this band. And uh, wow. and I think it's also like um this is his name Rob or whatever, like Harula dude. Harula? Uh, He's who in, was in Regulations too? and Vicious. I think he plays that's band. amazing. I think both so those yeah. guys and, uh, be like big, big, big names, right? I know. And it's crazy because like this record surely came out after refused already had blown up, you oh. know, but it, but it's cool because it's on like, I think Dennis uh, does that label who like, I think he did kick and punch. He like put out a bunch of these records, you know, um, like, of, oh, like sure. Umeo, like hardcore bands. And uh, that's an amazing. Um, compilation but the way right? Daniel just. Oh no, go ahead. No, no. <laughs> Go, go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, so, so, so the way Daniel uh, built this band to me, when he like first heard about him and I guess agreed to put out their seven inch is that like the four dudes in the band, it's basically like they picked the instrument or like role in the band that they were like the worst at. So like Dennis had never played drums in a band, I don't think, you know, and then like the singer had never sang in a band. And like, that was kind of the whole idea is that they were trying to make it as like primitive as possible. Wow. And you really hear that, you know, it's like, it's pretty, it's pretty like janky in a lot of ways, but also it's just like, it's just raging and like, sort of like catchy riffy, like sort of, but like really early eighties, like four track style, wow. like fast hardcore. And like, man, I just think like this record just fucking rips, man like big fan and like the thing is about these records is that you can still find them for like two dollars three dollars yeah. or whatever and i just think they're like hidden gems from like that sort of era oh shit okay <laughs> wow. but yeah i mean in Stang, man it's just like it's kind of funny that it's just like like i don't even know if like you'd call it like a side project or whatever but it, they only put out three seven inches and like all three of them are great records you know Dude, 2000s Swedish wild, hardcore, man. you know. That's what Daniel, well, I never, I never checked them out, but when you pulled that first record, I'm like, I've seen that record a bunch. When I was like, what? You know, I never just picked it up. Mm -mm. I used to see it all the time. I haven't seen it in a while. I, so that, yeah. You know, like if you got two bucks on, you give it a shot, man. You might like it. You know. I was gonna yeah. say, is that like, is that like a dollar bin ripper? <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. It might oh, be yeah. like some places you go, it might be like a 50 cent ripper. I don't know. <laughs> like, Damn. Oh, hey, um, my deal. friend once told me that, uh, <laughs> something really funny. My friend Austin told me that, uh, because <laughs> you mentioned Refuse, and he mentioned that he was, he told me that that song, New Noise from Refuse, you know, that song, New Noise? It's like the, the song. Is that on the famous record? Oh, yeah. Or whatever? Yeah, that yeah. song. He said that that's like the punk version of that one song by Disturbed. <laughs> <laughs> that's just fucking funny, man. It, it is, he's it's not it's wrong. Totally yeah. 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 He's not wrong. Yeah. <laughs> it's funny. But, it, but it, like, I will say that like, even though that dude was in like kind of like a big band and shit, that dude, Dennis, I think he's like sort of like remain sort of interested in like diy punk and hardcore he has like a yeah. youtube channel where he like talks about new records coming out and stuff, and he seems like he's still involved you know i was yeah. just gonna say that I, i've been i watched a couple of episodes and like man like he's still really super interested and passionate about like underground bands and diy punk and stuff like, and, and he's played in other bands too yeah like, for sure like a good amount right like yes yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. he, he stays busy no no i'm not not hating you know no 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 i no. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> the refuse. He's played in a lot of other bands apart from the refuse. That's but cool. it is kind of like disturbed, you know. Right. <laughs> <laughs> that band was massive. He's in. He's in that. He's in that band with like 
Is it Brian Baker? Maybe is it, is it the? Oh, what the fuck? Yeah, he's oh, oh yeah. The, the uh, fake names. Wow. Fake names. Yeah, yeah. Oh shit! Oh, yeah. it's like a super yeah. group kind of thing, super right? Group. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Man, what super group? It definitely is. It's not very good. <laughs> They're not super. They're just a group, right? <laughs> uh, all right. That's a great pick. That's new to me actually. But I, I dig all that like Umir Umir stuff. Back, back then, 2000s. Right? Oh man, if you if you like that style, it's like, this band is like sort of like the it's like regulations, but like even more raw and kind of falling oh, wow. apart. It's cool. Nice man. Ah, okay, cool. Sick. All right. Cheers. Cheers. I'm nervous Listen about my that. next round. I'm I like when uh, people recommend cheap records. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh hey, man, that inflation dog. Got to have them records cheap. Oh yeah. Well, wait a couple of years. Love cheap shit. Wait a couple of years, you better pick up that Night Fever record. (laughs) (laughs) Damn, you're calling it? No, I like that record. I'm I'm sticking. I'm sticking by my guns. All right, I I know. Yeah, you should. Yeah, Yeah, right. Don't back down. (laughs) Hey, I haven't heard it. You know. Uh, you you probably won't. All right, I'm nervous about my next round, but I'm going in with it, man. I like after because... night fever. You, you're nervous after <laughs> night fever <laughs> because I, I can't. I can't. I don't know how to talk about it very well. But fuck it, I'm, I'm going in, right? So, first of all, let's say hello to Tom from General Speech. Oh who's not, shit! Who oh, isn't shit. watching? Okay. He's not watching, but he is being like super busy, like putting out four records at, like all at the same time by two Japanese bands, both of them with completely different styles, both of them like super, super obscure. And man, you got to love that man. It's like, you know, he's like so passionate about what he does. And uh, I, I love it. it. It's amazing. Um, <laughs> Rachel. Yeah, so anyway, so he's put, just put out four records, two by one band, two by another. I'm going with one of the bands because I haven't got the other band's records yet. I'm going in. Dion Wang. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, this is like super, super obscure, like bedroom punk, DIY punk, made by teenagers uh, in Osaka, like... 79 80 81 82 apparently so really like the only information that you can get about this band now is because of tom really i mean there's stuff like there's stuff in japanese and stuff but like he kind of lays it out on on his website like uh (laughs) the the general speech website right so it's kind of tempting just to like read what he said like on his website and i'm going to read a little bit of it later but uh so it's it's this band do one and it's like all tape tapes that they made in like uh, 1881 and then like there's two yeah yeah oh, shit. Oh, yeah. or cannibalism and then like uh the full the mikawi M- mikawi ken ichi which is like a full what, what, what's great about those bands too that those records is getting really high and reading the song titles i was, I was gonna <laughs> get that man i like okay so look at this so this one has 78 songs on it right <laughs> and then they all have a theme um, which one should i okay i'm gonna go with this one crying my baldness crying my thongs crying my e-caps i don't know what e-caps are crying my coat of mouth crying my soup crying you know and then rust, rusty thongs rusty soup like like dump the baldness it's just it's insane man. it's like hey mike yeah, Jeff. Hey, I'm I'm kind of having trouble reading that. Do you think you could uh pass it down to me real quick? Oh, <laughs> uh, okay. There we go. I'm going in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Cool. Well, yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> what are the song titles again? Let's see. Oh, slick. This one has like uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's not fifty nine songs on it. It's amazing, man. Like, but a, a, a lot of them are covers, though, right? I don't know, man. Like, a, you know, some, but like, 
There's a like, bad one. Like lays it out on the, on the general speech, like homepage. Like yeah, I heard about that. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, it's like yeah, I think it's like two or three guys. It's bedroom punk, like DIY punk, um, like super super obscure. But man, it's so much fun to listen to. It's crazy, man. Um, and it's funny because it doesn't. This is one thing I found out. Like Tom didn't mention this. They're from Osaka, but they're from like a like a, a small town, like north of Osaka. And that I used to work in that town when I first came here, so I know that town. And when I listen to this, I'm like fucking hell. I can just imagine being like a bored teenager, like in that like fucking town, and making this music like in your bedroom when you're like a teenager. Like, it absolutely makes sense. It's like it's not the city. It's like a fucking small. And it must have been even smaller, like back then, like in the middle of nowhere. It's yeah. called Hirakata. If anyone wants to go and visit Hirakata, the home Hirakata. of the one, <laughs> feel free. But man, it's just like these weird, like short bursts of like DIY bedroom punk, and they were like listening to everything, like reggae and like anarcho punk, and it's like throwing it at a wall and like coming out with these like crazy, crazy, uh, crazy songs. Hell yeah, Jeff, you, do you like this? What do you think? What's your, what's yeah, your verdict? Oh, I love it. Um, I think like I think I might like that stuff more than the Deef records, to be honest. Yeah, um, hell but, uh, no. I I, I swear, <laughs> like, I'm, pretty sure, like, I'm, I'm pretty sure I remember. I don't care. I, I love it. Um, but uh, I, uh, I I remember hearing like a Wire cover, and then I remember hearing some other UK band on there too. I'm pretty sure. I don't know. But Anybody like, yeah, Tom's that. like, it's like Met Wire, Cabaret Voltaire, Crass, Throbbing Gristle, but like, and it's also got like the Ramones, one, two, three, four. Like, they do that and then just like do a yeah. five second song. <laughs> you know what's weird? I feel like anyone that like kind of would like, um, like what what's considered like egg punk is gonna like really just like that shit because it's that's kind of, um, it's weird in that sense. Um, yeah. Yeah, so, not totally, but you know, I don't, I don't like it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Deef it is, man. Deef. <laughs> That's funny because Deef, that Deef, which I don't know if anybody has the Deef record to show tonight, but I, I remember like being on Soul Seek like years and years ago and people like not knowing if that band was actually real and stuff because they were doing like noise, like huge, like confused style before confused and stuff. And they were like super obscure and everything. But, yeah, uh, there was um. What I also like heard about that band is that Jeff. I'm sorry. What I also heard about that band is that they used to play like gigs that I think were kind of like secret. They were like sort of like anti-imperialist gigs or whatever. And so like, there's I don't know if there's a whole lot of documentation about when they would play. Right. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So this is just these records have just come out like like last two weeks ago, but all the recordings are from like 17, 80, 81, something like that. But I was talking to Tom about it last night or two days ago, and like because I didn't really know how to talk. But my uh, my first impression was like, man, imagine if like um like Michiro Endo from the Stalin like wasn't from Tokyo and like wasn't like an older man. He was like a teenager living in this like horrible like suburb of Osaka. And the Stalin never happened, and he was like making music when he was like fifteen years old. I reckon like that it would have, it would sound like this, and like the Stalin would never have happened, and he would have like this is the music he was made because some of it does sound a little bit like that early weird like Stalin and the other band, the Rabbits too. It sounds a little bit oh, like yeah. that at times. Crazy, it's that really early era of like Japanese punk. Man, buy these records, support Tom Mara. He's like. He's like so passionate about what he does. I can't uh, emphasize that. Enough. All four of them are, are really cool. Yeah, I think he, yeah. he did a really good job splitting them up. He did a good. I mean, I even think it's funny now looking back at it. He did the fucking chain punk versus egg punk <laughs> on the release. I don't release. They're both they're both super sick, um, and totally in, in different ways. And I think it, it it's a good. Uh, like scope of like early punk in japan yeah it's fucking sick and really obscure shit you know yeah that um i'm glad he did it and he did a, he did a really good job I, I, he's the only person that could yeah. do this properly um and i'm glad he did it and so i 
Everyone, go and buy this. Please. The packaging looks beautiful on them too. He did beautiful. an amazing job with that. Beautiful, yeah. beautiful. Yeah, I, like you know, just like the amount of work that he puts into the design and everything, and just 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 everything, just everything about it. Just it's just uh, obviously like a complete labor of of love. Amazing, great, great stuff. Very sick. Yeah. <laughs> it's fucking crazy stuff, man. I was like having such a good time with this record like last night. It's like one, two, three, four. Next song. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's how you know when the shit's gonna go down, man. When they count it off, like, man, it's just about to pop the fuck off. <laughs> All right, there we go. All right, Kevin, what's your what's your next pick? Um, oh, we're talking about cheap records. <laughs> this is a cheap record. It's affordable, and um. Yeah, this was around, I don't know what fucking year this is from. It might be from like early 2000s, I think, uh, mm. uh, is when it, was, when it came out. It's on Prank. Oh. Yeah, it's got, it's, I think it was like 2002, maybe? I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. But it's this band. Oh! On record. Yes! Yeah. Oh, sorry. I, sorry. I, go ahead. <laughs> so Hyena... Eating, uh, what the fuck? I don't know what that is. A bird, maybe? I don't know. A vulture? It's the a album title is, it's not going to happen. You know, I can't even it's try Polish, it. Polish, right? P-E-S-D, <laughs> right? It's the name of the band. Yeah, P-E-S-D. Because I don't know, it doesn't look like there's, like it, you know, it doesn't look like much. It's crazy. You know, the record itself looks like it's not going to lie you know, it looks a little rough. Like mm. you, you wouldn't be in, probably be too interested in this. It doesn't you know the back is tripped out, but it's punk and it's punk in a fucking really cool way. That's I don't even know how to describe it. So this band is um, somebody from Anti Regiment from Poland, and it's a Polish band. Anti Regiment, oh. Post Regiment, right? Post Regiment. Sorry, I said that. Oh, yeah, Post Regiment. Post Regiment. Yeah. And he got the singer of that old band, uh, Tragedia, Tragedia. Yes. yes. Tragedia. Yes. I don't know. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. That old Polish punk band, super like kind of gruff vocals, you know. And he got him to sing on this. Yeah. And this thing is fucking crazy. It's weird. I feel like maybe if you like that Japanese band, uh, She, mm -hmm. something like that. You like that's you know, way way better, man. Though I like like honestly, but but you know what I'm saying. Like it kind of has like an industrial yes yes to it. Yeah. Yep. Um, it's mm. spaced out so well, kind of like a little bit like of that like that one Armia record, um, Leyenda or the yeah that that Armia record. I feel like there's a lot of that influence maybe on this, especially with like it comes to the production and like that weird shit that they're doing. Cause there's like other shit layered on it. You know what I mean? Some, at some point it even sounds like fucking lasers. Like, I don't know, it's crazy, <laughs> but it's fucking tight. And it's got like, kind of like, you know, they palm it a lot. They do some cool kind of like industrial metal kind of, uh, you know, touch to it. It's fucking sick. Oh man, it's, it's, it's incredible. It's gotta be like five bucks, like when you see it, you know? Um, and it came out on prank, you know, and it's a fucking really, really good record and it's cheap and it, you know, it's fucking weird. It was like a project or some shit. I've never heard of it. Yeah. It's like a side project because like post regiment did a song of all tragedy covers, right? They did. A right. Yeah, yeah. They did the whole yeah thing before it came out. And then, uh, uh, that label from Texas, Todo Destruido, um, Eddie, he, he Eddie's put out the vinyl. And that record um, is pretty affordable too, and it's, yeah. it's available. It's super fucking cool. That tra uh, tragedia. That sounds more like a early Sikera, uh, you yeah, know. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. More like that tip. It's fucking really cool. It sounds like you know, kind of like um, like Mexican punk almost. Like you know, it's a trip. Like early Mexican hardcore. That record that you just showed, man. When that came out, I played that to death, and. I talked to Ken about it. He's like, yeah, nobody cares about this record. Like, he, Ken probably still has, like, boxes of them in his, like, house, man. I mean, it, it was a hard sell. It's, like, a little bit industrial. But the vocals are amazing. It's, like, super, like, impassioned and, like... It's fucking and it, it's, 
and it's really hard to describe because the words that you use to describe it, it's like, oh, industrial, a bit metal, eh. but no, just ignore that and check it out because it's absolutely amazing. It's still got like great delivery and spacing also like it gives the song time to breathe and that's where that industrial kind of like yeah. kicks in you know and the vocals still come in like you know sick it's it's fucking so weird to describe it's so it and it's it's fucking unique and it's, i think it's one of a kind and damn it's fucking, so good that like Polish I punk is fucking sick as fuck it's I like polish punk kind of made on like like yeah. computers or something i don't know man it's like fucking... it's, it's always so like I don't know, like militant and like I don't know. There's something fucking to it, and but this is like on another level. That's one of those records that when it came out, I actually bought like five copies of it and just gave them to friends that I, who I thought might like it. That's like how much I liked it. Yeah, if I ever see it, I'm buying it. I'm giving it to someone for sure, just because it'll be cheap and it'll be you know, hopefully they'll like it. Oh uh, yeah. That's my I mean, pick. when you say like it's industrial, does it have like drum machine? Yes. Yeah. Oh, fuck yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Got it. Yeah. It's I just like, basically like that guy just... from... Check it out. It's, it's better than you can't get do it justice with, justice with words. Like just, you just have to listen to it. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, yeah. everything that you said, like, you know, like, yeah. I love you like industrial that, uh... and shit. You know, like... Oh yeah, like industrial influence punk. I I really love that kind of shit. You know, um, it's like if that band like uh, Optimum Wound Profile, which is like yes. noise terror. And yeah, you were, were from that Poland. Mm. That's ah, what okay. That would sound like. You're the one that put me on that band. I never even heard of them. Mm. They're fucking they're good shit too, man. What what did you what did you say, Mike? Uh, there was this band called Optimum Wound Profile, and it was like Phil from Extreme Noise Terror uh -huh. and a couple of guys from like deviated instinct and they did like this industrial stuff like back in like the 90s uh they got side to roadrunner for a bit um but like their records are the first two albums are really really like good like kind of uh, not exactly like that but it's like the british version of that kind of you know like yeah yeah before um yeah optimum wound profile i check that out too but yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, that's just cool. It's also kind of it's got some melody. You like uh, on, the, on this record. Go ahead, Jeff. Go ahead, Jeff. Do y'all like that? Uh, the now Alexandria record. Uh, the Ciara record now Alexandria. Like it's the uh sort of post punky one. It's like I guess it's kind of industrial, mm -hmm. but like, is it anything yeah. like that or is it sort of heavier? Uh, it's it's heavy. It's heavier, dude. Um. Yeah, Got it. Fuck, yeah. yeah, and there's just no like, oh, okay, oh, they're kind of trying to do this. That there's nothing. It's like so unique that you can't. There's no reference points to it, really. It's like, well, when you listen to it, it makes sense. Like, yeah. You know, it, yeah, it's yeah, it's it's got some melody to it, but it's not like post punk. Like, no, you know no, what I mean? no, 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 it's not. It's not that. Like, it's just got. Like, I don't know, man. It's fucking cool. Yeah, there's still, there's still a discharge influence in there somewhere. There is That's weird. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like somewhere wow. in there, you know. It's powerful. Yeah. It's super powerful. Yeah. Very cool. I, that's an, sorry. I got super excited when I saw that because I love that record like so yeah, much. Yeah, it's, it's really yeah. sick. Yeah. All right, Dan. What you? All right. Doing? So, I was recently checking out um, the um, Rocky and the Sweden Boris split. Nice. And I fucking I thought it was sick as fuck, and like I didn't realize when they did that split they added the, the original guitar player back, I believe. And so there's a lot of cool like leads and stuff and a lot of more rock and roll influence. Like uh, they came out this record, um, oh, fuck the yeah. City, City Baby Attack by Buds. And uh, they had a different guitar player then. And it's still a fucking great record, man. I fucking love that shit. But listen to that Boris split, man. I was like, dude, I gotta go back to the fucking the, the good shit, man. I, I kind of teased this record last time I was on, but God oh, Save the yeah. Green by fucking Rocky in the Sweden. This shit fucking, dude, this shit smokes, man. I mean, this has been <laughs> fuck yeah, dude. Light that smoking slugger up, bro. Smoking fucking, slugger. <laughs> yeah. But I've, I've always loved Rocky in the Sweden, man. Like, I'm like, um, you know, it's one of those bands, like, 
before a lot of bands were on YouTube and before you could find shit on YouTube, there's this fucking video that was on a website. I can't remember if it was Hardcore Holocaust or what. But it was a music video for one of the songs on this record, Brand New Life. And it was like, you can't find it on the fucking internet anymore. But like, dude, like the fucking singer had blonde, like bleach blonde hair and a white fucking denim jacket or leather jacket and was fucking going crazy and shit. And that just blew our minds. It was like, this band fucking rules. Fuck. Like this high intensity fucking rock and roll punk. You know, it's got Kobayashi from Bastard on drums. So yeah, this Captain shit Man. fucking cooks, dude. Like, and like listening to that Boris split, I was like, man, this shit's so fucking sick. But I don't own that. So I had to go back to the fucking my favorite record. I'm just like, I fucking love this shit. It came out in like 2000. Mm-hmm. So yeah. like when we, when we heard about this, it was probably about around that time, like 2000, 2001. That fucking shit, this shit blew our fucking minds. We we're, you know, super young punks and shit you know pre-youtube era kind of shit we're like holy fuck they had like um they had like a vision right for what they were going to be like it's it's like and they totally stay like stay true like you know weed based like yeah japanese hardcore with lots of like leopard print and like sunglasses and like white leather and like you know like, yeah so. dude like straight fucking like high intensity <laughs> rock and roll man like yeah, it's yeah, like cool. almost like you can kind of hear like they they got high and put motorhead on 45 rpm <laughs> and they're just like this is sick let's go and fucking <laughs> like, you know like dude that's that's rocky into sweden man and they fucking these dudes smoke a shit ton of fucking weed i got him I don't, um, I don't know how they kind of get away with it, like because they're so blatant about. It. Maybe it's like so blatant, and all the references are in English that like the just the, the the police or whoever like don't get it. They don't even realize like what they're talking about, you know. So yeah, I, I mean it's 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 pretty blatant too, and like they just don't give a fuck. Like, <laughs> and some of it's kind of cool too, like uh, the eight four four seven inch, like. Is uh when you like when you say eight four four in Japanese it's hashishi. Hashishi, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck yeah. So, like, I didn't know that. Do, and, That's like, fucking cool. But, yeah. but even even the name of the band has a, a meaning, right? Like a double meaning. Yeah, I believe so. Like, um, it's like Rocky is that. Rocky is like Moroccan, right? Moroccan black, oh, right? Oh, nice. And then the Sweden, like, okay, so in Japanese, Sweden is a water pipe. So it's like ah. basically Moroccan hash on the water pipe is like the name of the band. <laughs> Whoa. Um, That's fucking sick. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, they're, they're yeah, fucking merch too. Like their shirts have like giant buds on them and shit. It's like they're they're not hiding anything about that shit, dude. They're fucking, and the, like their attitude and their fucking whole approach to all that shit is just, it's sick. I'm like, these guys are legit as fuck. And then they, they kind not- of broke up for ages and then came back and that was still amazing you know yeah yeah like we were gonna come to to one time and i think it was before the original guitar player left and then like i went back in 2019 uh and they had recorded this album and right kobayashi was like yeah check this shit out and um like after hearing that boris split like uh, I saw some videos, and now they have two guitar players. Including they have this two guitar. younger guys who are who are not from the hardcore scene. They're from like the more like rock scene. Those yeah, those yeah, guys yeah. Are as well. So uh, yeah, and they they did sound fucking amazing. You know, they're fucking. I saw some videos, and they look fucking crazy as always. They look like rock and roll as fuck. You know, long hair and like fucking crazy clothes and shit. Yeah, yeah, it's right. it's it's still fucking badass shit. You know, and like. I think like even on the Boris split too, like they fucking do a song that's like, um, it's like a rip. Uh, it's like a homage to like one of the fucking Cheech and Chong songs. You know, it's like da 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 from like Up in Smoke. They write a song with that in it, and that's part of the groove of the song. It's really fucking cool. So like, because they're stoners, man, they're into that like yeah, 70s, dude, you know, they got that life. Yeah. So like, that's my fucking pick. If you haven't listened to this in a long time, throw this shit on and have yourself a fucking good weekend. Rocky and Sweden. Up, and God, save the, yeah, God, God save, save the green. Yeah, God save the green. Rocky and Sweden. 2000s. Okay. Yeah. I, I have like a promo tape of that that yeah. uh, Takeshi sent me, but I can't I can't find it. Uh, I, didn't, I didn't know about that band until I went to Japan. And uh, I met 
that dude, uh, Fudo Brain. You know, oh, oh, yeah. 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 And I didn't know about the band. And then I checked it out and I was like, oh shit, this is cool. Yeah, he's yeah. doing like he's the guy that's like he bought poison poison idea over the last time and he's doing like a lot of like tours and stuff and uh he's an interesting he he up he uh he put out the state show with Flexi, right? Mm-hmm. Do what now? Takeshi oh, Takeshi Sweden from Rocky in Sweden put yeah. out the state children flexi. Oh what the oh, fuck? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Uh, and he was in that band Headless as well, who, who yeah. were kind of like an Damn. Old, that's yeah. a cool band, too. Just oh, yeah. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> blowing Jeff's That's mind with the Rocky exactly. Sweden <laughs> tidbits. <laughs> and uh, Fudo Brain ships to America, I didn't too, know which is like kind of uncommon, too. And there's another, here we go. I've got one more. It's not that great. But oh. they, like he was also in a band called Sweats, who are like, on one or two like compilations. And out of nowhere, they put out like a space rock record that sounds like Hawkwind. And this is like back in like the late 90s. And it was on the same label that did like that that uh, Grave New World and stuff, like the Singer of Crows, like side projects. Oh, yeah. They only pressed like 300. But like nobody cares about that record. But like record, if you come to Japan, like look for the Sweats album. It's like a space the rock Sweats. record. Sweats okay, cool. made by so they were still in the... Takeshi Sweden. So they were oh. still in the weed at that time too, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like oh, it's called <laughs> Open the Open the Sky to the Wisdom. It's the name of it's the name of the record. <laughs> <laughs> of course it is. Fuck yeah. yeah. I'll show you it later after the show. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> All right. Well, cheers to that Takeshi. Cheers, cheers to Takeshi. Shouts out Takeshi. Takeshi Sweden. Shouts out Kobayashi. Shouts out Japan. <laughs> yeah, man. Man, you know what? I I love that oh, record. Yeah. I do love it. it. It is amazing, but I do prefer like the first one a little bit more, just a little bit. Yeah, and that was that was awesome too, man. I love that record. Yeah. I just think that like they kind of um they they added. I think I feel like um THC is a little bit more hardcore also. Yeah, like, and the production is massive on THC. It's like come, yeah, yeah, because, it's great. Yeah, and I I had that one originally on CD first. And I wore that motherfucker out, um, but I always go back to "God Save the Green." It's always I think it's, it's just longer, right? It's more like a full length, full length album, right? Whereas THC is like a bit, it's a bit, a bit shorter. Yeah, yeah. We love rocking the Sweden. Yeah, I don't know the timeline of the records at all. It's like, like early two. It's one. like early, like maybe nineteen ninety nine, like two thousand, and they have some seven inches too, right? So um, yeah, was, yeah, they started was, like nineties. Was this THC one came out before or after? What are you saying? Was THC bef- uh, before or after that one? Before, before, before. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I'm not sure if THC is considered a, a um, like a. I think it's an EP, right? Yeah. So this would be like their originally on Bloodsucker, and then uh, it got yeah. released in the states too by yeah. Partners in Crime. Maybe? Yeah, Partners in Crime. Yeah. 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 But I know they put this one out on LP. Like I think THC was put out on CD originally, right? Yes, yeah. Yeah, and then, then this one was put out on vinyl. That one's getting like a little bit up there. It's like a like a five thousand yen record now, like that one. Yeah, I noticed that too. I I got this one. Where the fuck did I get this? I have no. I think I got it like a manic relapse or some shit. Mm-hmm. Like some dude was selling like it's some a- cheap fucking Japanese hardcore, and like uh, I got that in like Squeeze State by. Uh, by fucking zone for like dirt cheap so it's uh it's on a big label it's on like disc unions label yeah dude so label. it's diy so this is on like um it's it's DIW distributed Comics. by disc union but it's like some label called do phalanx yeah, it's it's diw phalanx which is actually disc unions lit, lit record label yeah 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 that's what i understand it's kind of like a subsidiary of this, yes right? yeah 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 cool yeah, yeah. There's a lot of di- it's it's kind of crazy too. That label has a lot of different shit, a lot of different styles of music on it. Yeah, I think it's just like some guys that work at Discunion, like that's like their side thing, like their punk kind of label, but they do other stuff. Too. Oh, they, okay, they, cool. I mean, Boris were on that label too, right? Like Boris. Yeah, yeah, Boris record. is on it. A lot of Boris yeah. records, I think. Yeah. yeah. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Right. Jeff, you're, what, what you got, man? What you got? 
So in the 2000s in Scandinavia. As a thing developing. <laughs> <laughs> Never really. So, yeah, yeah. But I, like, I threw this on for the first time in a while. It's, uh, it's this EP by this band called Quick Fix. Um, it's also on Adult Crash. Um, and I think this is like, from what I understand, this is like sort of like a one man band kind of thing. And like, I looked up the dude who did the record and like, I don't know if he was in any other bands that anyone thinks are any good, but I think this fucking rips. It's actually like a, it's six songs and it's a single sided seven inch and every song is like 30 to 40 seconds long. Wow. And it's just like, it's this like sort of like raw, but like sort of like super like catchy riffs and like sort of like, it's like, like you listen to like one of the songs and it's sort of like, you know, the chorus sort of before the end of it kind of thing. Like it's, it just like, I don't know. They're just like, it just like blazes passes you in like less than five minutes. And it's just like six songs of just like killer, like 80s style, like riffy hardcore with like great vocals, like great drumming. It's just like, this is just like killer EP. And I think it might be kind of like a sleeper hit. I don't know how much people even like still talk about this record or anything, but like, throwing it on for the first time after like a while, I was just like, man, this thing rips. Damn, I want to check it out. Yeah, me too. I, yeah. Uh. Yeah, it's cool. I feel like, I don't know. I feel like, I don't know. It's like, to me, it's like, if you like sort of like, just like raw sort of urgent, like straightforward, like 2000s kind of like 80s revival hardcore, this is like, I don't know. This is like slept on, man. This is a great record. And it's kind of like, I don't know. It's it's gnarly. It's like the dude's like shooting up I don't, like that you know, whatever. And, uh, <laughs> and then like, uh, on the back of the record, it says like, it just says quick fix hates you fuck off. And it has no other information about the band at all. <laughs> so yeah, right up, right up my alley. I don't know. Anyway, I've never heard, heard of it. Never heard of it. It's great. I feel like I used, to, I, 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 I think that's one of those ones that you see a lot, you know, <laughs> like, I never seen that shit. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's like new to me. It's yeah. It's I think it's like I think it's a pretty early one on Adult Crash too. I think it's like Adult Crash like number like five or something like that. You know, what it might be just like one of his might just be like one of his buddies. Like, hey, I recorded this thing, and like he was like, I'll put it out. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. Fuck yeah. But it's really good. It's like really fucking. I I didn't realize that they were uh, around like that much back then. Yeah, I feel like I was also kind of late yeah, to the sure. game with Adult Crash. Like, there's probably a whole bunch of stuff that I, I'm not aware of, right, in the early early days. Mm. Yeah, I mean, Daniel even used to kind of, like, say that, like, because, like, they put out those, they both put out those Instanged records, that in a way they're, like, he felt sort of a kinship between, like, early Sorry State and early Adult Crash in, like, the 2000s and mm. stuff, and I could totally see that. Mm-hmm. Daniel put out like oh, yeah. a couple other like kind of like Swedish bands too, you know, like this band UX Vileheads, which are like really great. Oh right, you know? that's um, a good one, yeah. Yeah, yeah. that was a weird. But again, all records that are probably like <laughs> bucks now, you know. But... Oh, yeah, they yeah. were affor- they were affordable back then though. Mm-hmm. That's why pe- they're probably cheap because true. to be honest, back then they used to sell them for fucking cheapest like ridiculous prices. And that's why, like, they got into a lot of people's hands. Like, you know, know, that's why I ended up in my hands. Uh, my homie Sal, I know for sure my homie Sal. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Here, Sal. I know you know what I'm talking about, dog. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and people used to press enough <laughs> copies back then, right? Like, it wasn't like, you know, that's true. There were enough to go around, but you know, I know it's tricky these days. You know, it's uh, it's it's hard these uh-huh. days. You know, but uh, you know. yeah, yeah. Hey, um, it's funny. Daniel told me this story one time about, uh, oh, sorry. <laughs> no, no, go ahead. Actually, I got to go take a it's picture. It's me up, man. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> uh, Daniel, told me, okay. Daniel told me this story one time about like, uh, when grave mistakes sort of first raised their prices for seven inches from $3 to $4. Apparently there was like an uproar and all these people were just like, Fucking grave mistake in their rock star prices and shit you know, <laughs> for a four dollar seven inch. Hilarious. What's that? What's a new seven inch now these days over there? Like eight? Like ten. Ten more. Ten bucks. Twelve. Oh yeah. Bucks. Yeah. Once you know what? The last four. label that I feel like honestly had cheap records was Toxic State. Toxic State used to have super cheap records back then. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. 
I mean, you know, Prank, Havoc, they always kept their prices yeah. real low. Havoc. Fuck, respect to Talks Havoc. Talks to Satan all that money is stamping the records and screen printing the covers, you know? Like, <laughs> yeah. Man, printing. it's like, by the time that they those records make their way over here, like the seven inches, right? By the time they get into stores, like, over here, like, they're like 1,000, like, 600 yen or about that. Which is I don't know, man, what the exchange rate is today, but that's like expensive. That's like a lot of that's a lot of money to pay for like a record. Is that like fifteen dollars or something? It, more than that, yeah. Um, oh, wow. it's, it's 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 tough for the record stores too, right? Because you know it's hard. It's hard. It's hard. You know. There's that band, uh, The Antidote that i think is from osaka and they put out their seven inch and they made it super cheap and they like they even made it like a thing like hey we're trying to make this shit like as affordable as fucking possible yeah they probably just i know that a bit about that i mean they're they're losing money on that they just yeah. pull, they just put money in out of their own pockets and like and they like, but i think i think it's cool too because yeah, the packaging yeah. was like more diy yeah. and it looked it gave it like a cool ass vibe i think you know that's a that's a great band yeah they're from yeah. Osaka. yeah they're like yeah. Yeah. that rules you know, that's sick. Yeah, there's still a few bands like doing that kind of thing. Um, yeah, it's hard though. It's hard these days. You know what I was thinking the other day? I was thinking, man, there hasn't been like, and then after I thought it, I was like, no, you're wrong. Like, there hasn't been like a really like raging record out of Italy for a while. Like, but then I was like, oh, yeah, there was. There was a really good one <laughs> like last year, which was that. Um, the Spirito Golden. di Lupo record, right? Which was amazing, right? But there's not been too much, I want to say, right? Like from Italy in like recent years, like in the in the kind of like in the furious, like, you know, traditional Italian hardcore like style. Like I can't think of too much. Maybe you guys like have, have heard some other stuff, but like Hell no, man. I haven't heard of anything. Right? There's not that. much, right? It's, I mean that's that, that man. Other than that, yeah. it's more it's more like kind of like power pop kind of yeah. kind of rock and roll kind of from what yeah. i've heard you know right but i haven't heard like crazy hardcore from there really other Me than neither. that yeah yeah so all means, dude, if we're slipping like comments so we we know we know what's up oh <laughs> yeah <laughs> put us on some <laughs> new new italian hardcore yeah put us yeah on i mean up. I, yeah oh I here we go like, there's daniel yeah like that spirito uh the Lupo record, it seems like this, it kind of came out of nowhere and it blew, blew like, kind of blew everyone away. And that's an amazing record, right? From, from like, just fucking last year. Like, it seems like it's older than that, but it's like just from last year. I someone don't know. Said, I, someone said Fogna. Fuck yeah, that seven inch is fucking sick. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's that one's really sick. Um, it's really cool. Cripple Boss is, nah, I don't know about. <laughs> That's old though, right? Like that's a that's a kind of older band. I think they were were they nineties? Nineties, but maybe still going. But like more more like kind of grind grind grindcore maybe. Oh. But uh, yeah. I don't yeah. know. Man. But that band Fogna though, they have a really yeah. fucking good seven inch. Yeah, yeah. It's just kind of on the like it's like kind of wretchedy, but uh, a little more crusty. Yeah, from what like, I remember. It's, it's like they're all on like it's like on like clear vinyl with sort of like like sort of like this old artwork like old like sort of painting looking artwork or whatever at yeah. Fogna. yeah so like i got something new that just came out uh came out in january like out of italy i'm not sure like if this got around too much i feel like daniel must have had this in the store he must have done it's on a, a label called uh it's on it's one of those ones that's on like six or seven different labels um but it, it's a one-sided 12 inch it's uh, it's this record, Potere Negativo, Negative Power. Just came out like this year, so it's like a one. It's a one-sided twelve inch. It's like twelve minutes long. Beautiful man. If you miss like the furious years of Italian hardcore, like this might scratch an itch uh, oh, yeah. for you. It kind of starts off slow. It kind of builds up, then it just like kind of explodes into like twelve minutes of like raging italian hardcore there's a bit of like a chorus effect on the guitar which like spirito di lupo di lupo also had but like this is like proper like uh italian hardcore punk from the, 
from the Furious Years. From Milan, they're a band from Milan. Milan. Don't know anything about the band. I haven't really seen anybody talk about what, what is it called again? So okay, the name of the band is a Potere Negativo. The Potere? name of the record is Benvenuto Al Inferno, and it's on Trujaka Fala Records. And a, like a whole bunch of other labels, which I, I might type out uh, later, but uh, it's good, man. But it's more like um, it's not wretched. It's more like like first LP Negazioni. It's a bit more polished. It's pretty rocking. Mm. I, I am. I I'm surprised like more people like aren't talking about this. Like, yeah, it could be. I, I feel like yeah, it's, it's, it's it's funny that you mentioned Daniel. I don't I don't think we've stocked it as no. far as I know. I mean, you know, it's a totally DIY thing, like one, two, three, four, six different labels, six like small DIY DIY labels put out. But uh Nun Chaku Punk DIY punk label. Uh yeah. I mean, you know, obviously it's not a classic like Negazioni or Impact or you know. But it's good. I think it's cool that there's a bunch of labels on it. Yeah, they made it happen. You they know? made it happen, right? Yeah, yeah I think there's a shitload of people yeah. make it happen. Teamwork makes a dream work, baby. Yeah. yeah. So I'm gonna check it out. Check it out, man. It's like yeah, yeah. one sided, twelve minutes long. One, two, three, four, five, six, eight, nine songs. Nine songs in twelve minutes. There you go. We got two one sided records brought up today. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. Fucking yeah. people are pretentious, yo. <laughs> <laughs> check it out, man. If you know Bro. I actually had one too that was like on my fucking stack. I was like, nah, I'm not gonna fuck with that one. Is that Psy, the the tribute to Venom that's like one sided and it has like the fucking pentagram on the other side? Idiota civiliz uh, civil civilizato. Idiota civilizato. That band was tight. Yeah, that's fucking oh, right. Yeah, that's a great. Oh hell yeah. Damn, I forgot about them so quick. They were really We're slipping, good, man. We're slipping. Yeah, yeah, I'm slipping there. I don't know, it's just like, cool. like I said, you know, it's like it's slim picking, so it's it's just nice to kind of get some new raging DIY Italian hardcore, you know, out of Italy. Yeah. Pretty cool, so, yeah. That band is, yeah, Idiota Civilizato. They were really cool. I think they did it really well, like that style. Nice. Did, some, did Beach Impediment sure. put that out? I think it's just one Italian dude. Oh, yeah. What was it? I can't remember. One One's enough. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He made it happen, yeah. yeah. He made the yeah, fucking yeah. sick house down. Yeah. All right. People are asking about did you hear that? You heard the garbage truck, right? You heard it. Yeah, it was cool because you're talking about yeah. that record and you held it up and it started chiming in. I was like, damn, this is like it's it was a it was a epic cinematic moment, man. <laughs> <laughs> he's, got, he's got it planned. He knew what time it was coming. Yeah, I, like, yeah, I want to be showing this around. I want to be showing this around like twelve thirty ish. Like, <laughs> he planned it. I should have. No, I should have had the Night Fever record. That would have been <laughs> with the ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> with the with the New York New York ice cream. <laughs> All right, Kevin. What's your what's your next pick? Um. Yeah. Oh, fuck. Uh, <laughs> where am I? What am I doing? <laughs> uh, let me see. I got a, oh, fuck yeah. I got a sick ass one. I got a really good one. This is, you know, I, uh, I have the first LP by this band and I really love it. And, you know, I've had a lot of great times listening to that, like that music, but this record I think is fucking so so fucking good and it's it's got a lot going against it by having a lot of live songs on it you know but it's still like i put this on more than i do their first record and that is this record from oh. the partisans oh nice. yeah. yes. the time is right <laughs> he's killing it tonight man. this one is so yeah. fucking sick it's <laughs> not the partisans like what you had you know it's like it's it's kind of it takes a different to a uh, different step like the first partisans record you know it's one two beat it's pogo it's fucking easy me memorable lyrics that's kind of repetitive you know it's easy to, easy to channel along to um 
uh, you know, more on the like violence side of of lyrics too, like talking more about violence and shit like that. And it's sick, you know, when you're, you know, it's it's super cool. And this record is fucking like the clash almost, like like that side of stuff. And the lyrics are totally changed. And he's talking, I mean, he still has some political lyrics and all of that type of stuff, but you can tell like even that changed, you know, like he's got a lot more to say now, you know? And they kind of figured figured some shit out and they got to this and I think it's so fucking catchy and the yeah. song is so good and I love getting drunk to this fucking record and listening to it <laughs> and, it reminds, and it reminds me of a bunch of uh you know it reminds me of getting drunk with my friends too so if there's like the personal attachment to this I know drank a lot of beer listening to this you know what I mean right. and, it's, it's, <laughs> it's not yeah. bootleg it's the it's the second LP right the, it's the yeah it's the second LP it's on uh cloak and dagger is what it came out on. And it's yes. been reissued a couple of times. It just I got reissued, so. right? There could be a puke and vomit or radiation. I forget. Yeah. I don't know. But yeah, I didn't know what to expect. Partisans were one of the first bands I saw, like, ever, you know? Oh, wow. And um, when they played in Santa Ana, and, you know, that was, like, it was cool. But I, I, you know, I don't even remember if I heard a fucking single song off of this. You know, and I, I think they probably would have. Um, mm. But they also had, like, a kind of newer record i think back then something with a star but yeah this fucking record is super cool super catchy it's got some live songs on the b side of like you know it's just some some tracks and i think that's you know it's 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 weird because it kind of breaks up the record and then there's studio recordings again (laughs) right right and it's one of the fucking sickest songs ever like that song um damn i can't even fucking remember what it's called um Blind Ambition. There's a seven inch of it too. Yeah, that yeah. song is fucking beautiful and it's fucking <laughs> sick as shit. And like this fucking record, man, if you guys haven't heard this shit, fucking <laughs> bump it. This thing's gonna fucking, it's gonna get you stoked. <laughs> you're gonna get fucking stoked and you're gonna be like, fuck yeah, punk is all the right. best music of all time. <laughs> yeah, right. I think and it's like, just, it gets no overshadowed. What, it gets yeah, overshadowed yeah, by the first just, record, right? This but one goes out. Still amazing. Capital P, you know what I mean? Yeah. Hell yeah. yeah. <laughs> there's also sick. like I know it's not as good, but there's like that second um abrasive wheels LP. Nah one. man, uh, you're talking about black leather girls? Yeah. That was cool. It's cool. I like all the later like UK <laughs> stuff too. But I wouldn't that one it. got like fucking everyone it's hated it. that one when, when it came out. But you know, in retrospect, it's not that bad, you know. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, that one's better better than way better. Yeah. 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 Do you know that one from the Partisans? Partisans? I do. I mean, like, I've I've definitely heard it. I, I don't own it though, so I need to get a copy. You know. Yeah. Dan, what the, the fuck? Dan, well, that's that right, 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 uh, I know. <laughs> Stop that's... that shit for my boy, dude. Right here. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna bump it after this. After this feed, we probably had it. I don't know. That's that demos LP too, right? The Partisans like demos record that came out a couple of years ago. That's just really crazy. Cool. It has that. Yeah. It's yeah. anarchy you and know, Alcatraz honestly, or whatever. I yeah, think cool. the Partisans, uh, the Partisans uh, demos like LP that came out. I think it's better than the Comes LP that came out, like live one. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. In, okay. in packaging, like it's. Oh it's, yeah, it's okay. That, like it's that well, like he got so much stuff, right. so oh, much yeah. fucking stuff. It's and it looks like a yeah. book. You know what I mean? When you're looking through that shit, it looks like a book. It's fucking. They did a crazy good job on the packaging. Wasn't that guy that went on to be in like fucking like that super famous band? He wasn't he in the Partisans for a bit. Yeah. Gavin Rossdale from like um. Let, let us let me um, let me know in the comments that definitely like that guy. No way. Yes, Gabby no. Bush. From, from Bush. Bush. I I, I want to say that he was in the partisans. No like, way. Like, no. <laughs> 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 like, or that, or that was just like the weirdest dream I ever had. I'm pretty sure it's it's true. Bush, I knew it, man. That would, be, true. that would be incredible. He, he that's was in the wild, party. dude. That that's. Yeah, like he he was a punk man. That's why that's why Bush is so amazing. You can hear the, that punk. Hell UK's. yeah, man! Yeah. Yeah. Head, green to red, brother. 
<laughs> Can't hear you. You'll listen to Bush with different ears now, but you know that fact. <laughs> I like Bush now. I'm like, yeah. Okay. No, I just, <laughs> I just, I just oh yeah, song. has the guy from this fucking man. Partisans? <laughs> nah, man. It's, all, it's the partisans. Dude. It's crazy. Man, I, I've got another. It's the partisans story. featuring members of Bush. You know. <laughs> <laughs> The bass player from the Partisans was in Bush, not Gavin Rostell. But there, okay. But there, like, there is def- oh. there is a connection there. There you go. Thanks, Vincent. Uh, Dave Parsons. Okay. There you go. I I was I was almost right. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> uh, I've got another weird. Yeah, story. I don't know. <laughs> like back in like the like early nineties, like when I used to go and see gigs in Bristol, like. That kind of punk was like super, like it was gone. Like nobody was listening to that stuff, right? So you go and see like an, a touring band from America, like No Means No or like Scream or, you know, all of those great bands. And fucking like the members of like Chaos UK were fucking, would, would always be in the audience and heckling. <laughs> and, and, and I remember like to No Means No, like play a fucking partisan song. Play, 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 a, play a punk, real punk. And it, it was so out of like out of time at that point, yeah. like nineteen ninety, like eighty nine. It was like, what are these guys talking about? Because they were like, you know, trying to like say people have forgotten about like what punk is and stuff. And it, it was kind of funny. It was like funny, like heckling, you know, telling no means no to like play a partisan song. Like, That's fucking funny. <laughs> yeah. There you go. All right. Well, I mean, the partisans are way better than no means no. So, you know, <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Most of uh... well, well, in that case, the partisans should try and cover a no means no song. Oh, fuck. <laughs> no, dude. Partisans <laughs> need to cover uh, a Bush song, man. No. <laughs> That's what go. needs to happen. Yeah. You're right, man. <laughs> you're fucking right. Yeah. Fuck. All right. Wait, what song is this? Bush? Yeah, I'm going to grab another beer. All right. They got, um, they got Machine Head. They got fucking um, oh, what is that? Zen. They got so everything got, Zen. Everything Zen. Yeah, everything Zen. 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 Like I'm kind of like I'm old fucking I'm old. Well, I'm kind of old dinosaur. So like I grew up with this shit. But it um, is, I, I don't know those songs though. They were massive like, in the states, right? Like huge, like oh yeah, around the it, they were like, like one of those uh, bands that were like ooh, they're jumping on the grunge bandwagon and then they're not real. Yeah grunge and all that kind of stuff right it was like on the ass end of grunge yes. i remember like one of the first concerts i ever went to was like with bush and blink 182 and it was terrible like all the bands just wow. fucking sucked and i was like wow this is terrible and then like i started getting to real punk you know and then the, changed my life but like yeah bush was like on the ass end of the whole grunge movement in the states and it was terrible but i implore you to check it out You'll hear the you'll hear the partisans' influence for sure, though. Exactly. You you will listen to Bush with different ears now. I tell you. you really <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly, dude. That's <laughs> God, where are we? Whose turn is it? It's dance, dance. <laughs> All right. So, like, um, I've been oh, yeah. kind of like revisiting a lot of older shit too. Like, it came out around the two thousands, and um. I was listening to this when I was at work also. I've been fucking working my ass off lately. Of course, we all have, I'm sure. But this fucking record, when it came out, had a fucking stranglehold. Like, it was on everyone's top ten lists. And I feel like more people talk about the band that these dudes were in after this particular band. But the fucking Observers. Oh, fuck. Oh, word. So what's left now is a fucking awesome, amazing fucking front-to-back record. And it kind of just, like... It's like one of those records where you just you put it on and you listen to it all the way through. It's like almost like a concept record, but not really. No, it is like every song kind of just flows really well together. And it's cool because like this band was like not really one dimensional about like how or who they played with. So they would be playing like like my old fucking crust band Tolar played with these dudes. Like and they love that shit because they're from Portland. You know, and there's a lot of fucking badass like DB crust and shit. And um, this band was kind of like on the 80s hardcore thing. But <laughs> I, there's a lot more than that going on. It, it, they sound like the riffs start off kind of manic. And then they just like turn into these like really cool driving, like 
melodic parts mm. and uh the the vocals and the lyrics fit really well with the band they're just as melodic but not in a not in a corny or cheesy way at all either and this is like kind of like you know post 9 11 shit this is like in the 2000s so like it's, it was like when everyone was kind of feeling a little bit a lot like uh of the depression and shit like that you can tell that in the lyrics mm. and um yeah, do they play with they would play with bands like Selfish and shit like that. So they would play like with crust and hardcore bands, but they would always fucking steal the show just because they're that fucking good. And the fucking bass lines are just uh, you know, like I like I was talking about that mess record last time I was on here. And mm -hmm. so if you're a fan of like just crazy, just off the wall badass bass, this fucking bass player, the observers really fucking shines on this record. That so, stuff yeah. was like um like the estranged too right i think was kind of yeah like in the same realm of shit yeah like keith from uh hell shock and long knife was in the estranged and they're fucking great too and a lot of people talk about red dawns about you know that's kind of like but, what came later right i was yeah. gonna yeah, say yeah, that's yeah. like to me that's yeah. like kind of the roots of like red dawns and like that kind of dark garage punk with like yes, yeah yes yeah very that was that very was a band for a while music. too yeah yeah i remember that shit because there was also this band from sf that came later called neon piss that was i showed like, that record on this show it's that's amazing yeah yeah, yeah that was kind yeah. of around the same the, yeah. all them from that world though but it all started with like portland shit honestly i feel like right portland, yeah, yeah and then you've got like the hex portland, dispensers portland got, got they can they can they can keep that one that's that that was very nice <laughs> No, not, not not in a bad way. Like they get it, they get it as a win, right? You know, it's like, all right. Yeah, you know. So like you know, when when we would play shows and shit, we were always like we were big fans of like fucking uh, Mark Men, of course, and shit. You know, we'd go and go watch them play. So we were kind of you know in tune with that garage punk kind of sound. But these these dudes do it a little bit different. They like I feel like the music isn't so straightforward. It's not not as one dimensional as this like garage right. punk, but. It's it's a very interesting and uh honestly I like this band more than Red Dawn's like I think this record is like front to back a killer record and it's just like I haven't listened to it in fucking I don't know maybe like fifteen years. So I uh, put it on and I was like, dude, this thing's still a fucking great goddamn record. I love that stuff, man. That kind of like that red dawns and like neon pierce and the observers, man. It's just like I don't mind. It hits kind of hard. It's so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Those melodies just fucking catch you in the gut, dude. It's like, yeah. oh fuck, it's the hook and affordable. Yeah. Well, actually, that record's kind of getting hard to, to find now. That that Observer's record, I, I bet. really over here, yeah. over here. I, I don't know. Oh, really? What yeah. label is it on? This one is on uh, Vinyl Warning. Oh, word. Yeah, because Feral Ward was doing a lot of that, right? Like, and Derange, Derange, that was a label. Derange, Derange, yeah. Derange Canada, too, yeah. also, yeah. Adolescence wipers as well. I want to say a little bit. Maybe I don't know. Yeah. Like just has a just a darkness to it, you know. Even though yeah, it's, it's all wipers vibes, you know. Um, you know, if you're if you're hearing that kind of shit, this shit's dark, but it's fucking just as melodic as it is dark. It's fucking great shit. I find that they're that dark, but they're also kind of uplifting too at the same time. Yeah, yeah. It's very Portland if you think about it. Like it's very yeah, like, you know. Yeah. Portland's a beautiful right. place, but it's shrouded in clouds, you know? Yeah. And then, like, the trees and shit, kind of foresty type. Mm -hmm. fucking... Beautiful. It's a, yeah. There's a vibe, for sure. That's a, that's a cool one, man. That's a cool... Jeff, what do you think, fool? Say something. <laughs> oh, and, yeah, I like I like the Observers a lot and Red Dawns. It's funny, um, when the Red Dawns played in Raleigh, um, they played, like, two songs, and then the bass player – fell off the stage and he like broke his collarbone and they had to stop the show. And then uh, wow. next time they came back to Raleigh, they played a free show. It was so rad. What? Wow. Yeah. Damn. That's yeah. crazy. They like made up for it. It was so cool. You know? Yeah. That's fucking cool. Yeah. That they did that though. You know what I mean? Wow. So Rachel says this is like a yeah. cheap record. Over, over there, so. yeah. Wow. Cool. Hook, okay. hook, hook, hook me up. Somebody. <laughs> yeah, because you can't find it over here. Bloody Gears, that they were good fun too. Oh yeah, 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 Bloody Gears. Bloody Gears, yeah. They were were they Portland? I think they were the Bay, maybe. Uh, I, I might be getting confused. I don't fucking know. There was a lot of names like that. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> maybe I'm thinking Guilty Razors or something. I don't know. 
<laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, I, hey, it's been it's, a long it's, week. It's, We've it's, been it's drinking. <laughs> yeah. there's, a lot of, there's been a lot of throwbacks today. Yeah. We're Shit. deep in the cut right now. Yeah, We're going to do the fucking the oh, cheers. Cheers, cheers. Cheers. All right. Jeff, you're doing a great job, man. It's like with, with your... Maybe on the delay, the delay pedal. Thanks. <laughs> hang on, it's Jeff's turn, right? It's Jeff's turn. Yes, yeah, there we go. Yeah, yeah. So, um, I'm gonna kind of like uh, the theme's over. I was gonna do it like for every record, <laughs> but I was just like, whatever, I'll just do something. Else. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but, uh, like. But rather than Scandinavia, we're going to talk like Holland. So I recently got this seven inch by this man called the Blitz. Not to be confused with the UK Blitz, obviously. It's got two Z's. And a the. And this record, yeah. uh, mm -hmm. it's funny. Like, yeah, um, obviously, yeah. And so, so, like, I mean, the thing that's funny about this record is like, I had never heard of this band. And the way I heard about them is I got this record. Hold on. <laughs> nice. <laughs> this record came out pretty recently. It's a. Uh, yeah, it's a Jerry A and the Kings of Oblivion. It's like Jerry A from Poison Idea and uh, mm -hmm. his backing band are a bunch of Dutch dudes. And uh, this record is like, it's kind of like a love letter to sort of like proto-punk and like sort of like rock and roll. I mean, the Kings of Oblivion, they cover like City Kids by the Pink Fairies on this record. And like, nice. it's, it's only six songs and four of them are covers. But, uh, and it's, it's, it's like, you know, it's cool. You know, it's like, it's not going to blow your mind like a poison idea record, but it's like, it's a fun listen, you know, it's just seems like it was kind of like a fun project they did or whatever. Um, but like I, the first song on the record is this song, uh, degeneration that's on this single. And, uh, -huh. uh I was like, I was reading who wrote the song and I was like, Oh, I've never heard of that band before. And of course him being backed up by a bunch of like Dutch dudes, they're going to like cover like an old seventies punk band from mm -hmm where they're from, you know? And uh, this band, looking them up, they only did two singles in 1978, this one and another wow. one, which I'm on the hunt for. Um, but uh, to me, like, and it's crazy because they're on a major label. They're on like EMI Holland, you know? But they didn't do an LP. They just did two singles and it's kind of weird. Wow. But um, like, to me, they sound like very like sort of UK, you know? Like if like you played this record, I would never like, I guess they're from another part of Europe. I just assume they're an English band, you know? But um. Mm -hmm. To me, they kind of have that like sort of like a poppy kind of pub rock thing, but like sort of like moving into punk, like almost like a band like Chelsea or something like that. Okay. Um, but then, uh, then the vocals are kind of like have this kind of are kind of like deeper and gruffer, and it kind of reminds me of like songs Steve Diggle yeah. would sing in the Buzzcocks, right. or like there's like no reggae influence at all, but like also kind of like the ruts too, but. I mean, I don't know, man, it's just two songs, but like now this is in my sort of like stack of like sort of 77 punk bangers that I throw on regularly. So that's if y'all haven't heard this record, sick. it's like, I highly recommend it. Oh, yeah. It's, it's great. Like, it's really oh, fun. Yeah. Man. Did any members go on to be in a, like a famous Dutch grunge band like in the, in the 90s? <laughs> I I know. Yeah, actually Gavin Rosdale is in this band. <laughs> no, but, but uh no, it's 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 weird. I was like trying to figure out more information about them, but it's like it just seems like they're kind of like lost to the sands of time or something. It's weird. Uh that's but, like millions yeah, of yeah, those it's times, like, right? But now like right, yeah. Like, I mean it might be that like in Amsterdam or whatever, you can find these fucking everywhere. But like I ordered one overseas and ended up being like 20 bucks or something like that but i'm like fucking worth it you know oh yeah that's definitely we've, we've talked about him but that's definitely like tom from general speech he loves all that kind of stuff right like yeah European i guarantee tom. you he probably knows about that record <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah he loves that, that stuff right the i've Blitz. seen the cover before i think my friend played it for me once um, oh yeah and I didn't know what it was, and I was like, "Dude, oh, really? type. Yeah, and you could tell it's one. Of, it's got one of those classic vibes. Right. Like, it was. It had good production. There was some money put into it, but like, it's yeah. cheap in that sense. But it's um, it's a fucking sick ass record, you know. And they maybe just press a lot or something. I don't know. Sure, man. What's that one that just is yeah. from Belgium? And it's like, it's like from the mid seventies. It's and it's like total like proto punk. Mm -hmm. 
and it just got reissued. Oh, um, they're like, yeah. Um, blast? Uh, blast. That's it. Yes, thanks. Thank you. Thanks. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's just cool as fuck. <laughs> it's it's not really like that. It's definitely. I was saying about blast though. Ahead, I think I'm it's sorry. crazy because it sounds like speed metal mm -mm -mm. in a way. Yeah. So, so like part of part of that like blast song for some reason reminds me of Rainbow a little bit. Like you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Like you know like what's like some fast Rainbow song kind of like speed yeah. metal like proto shit. Kill the king. Cause, yeah, kind of like that song. Yeah. <laughs> it's a trip. But um, yeah, I think my friend played that for me, and I was like, "I gotta fucking get that shit or something," you know. And if it's reissued, I mean, whatever, I'll cool. do whatever. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, See, my friend, my friend Bango. I think my, Bango right? plays in personal damage. Yeah. Uh -huh. Oh hell yeah, I like Banya. Cool dude. And my oh, man. Shit. <laughs> Hate to be that guy, but you guys mind if I go piss again? Again? I be. I've been go go ahead. Ahead. There's too many cheers. Hey, well, I done broke the seal, man. So I am, I am pissed. Like, you yeah, should, uh, I'll be you should do what Jim Martin does and just do it in a, in a bottle under the desk. Nah. <laughs> let's, let's wait until uh, let's wait until Frank gets back. Man, I just saw that fly for that gig that's coming up. I toss cost plan, right? I think it's in Spain with like sound and stuff. Oh shit! We had that fest, yeah. That's crazy. That's and Manuel Iwanson's playing, I think. Yeah, from uh, Terrible Feelings. Yes, yeah, yeah. That was weird. I'm like, damn, I I forgot about that band. Her record from last year is amazing. It's kind of like '80s, like pop, power pop, but it's, it's great. I'm excited to see um, Ana Cura because that's uh, that's um, she was in Paralysis Permanente, like legendary spanish band oh, like wow. this punk um band and she co-wrote that record el acto like you know along with uh eduardo benavente who passed away and that's just like the most legendary shit in a way like especially over here in southern california like you can't escape that band right now anymore you know what i mean like it's wow. everywhere it's like everyone knows that how important that was to like music in spanish in general you know um yeah so i'm excited to just i'm excited to see to see her because last time we played with her once when uh she came over here and she played a desk control shop pretty much e7 in the back but the show started at four in the morning and toscos played and we played early and then after that we just went and like we were trying to stay up to to see her perform and i fucking we had to go pass out like it was too crazy wow. yeah yeah, it's actually Rachel who That's posted bad. it first, and I, it's like my birthday's coming up. Like, you know, I've got to go to this like festival. Like, in, it's in Spain, right? Not gonna lie though, it might be weird. It might be there might be a lot of like kind of like posh kind of people. I don't really know. I'm oh. I'm a little like you know, <laughs> you know, I'm a little tipped out. I like I don't know what other hardcore punk band there is playing that other than Spiritu de Lupo. Oh, that. That's it. There you go. That's okay. right. Yeah. But like, I don't know. Everything else is is very much on the like more like because... chill side. All right. Which is cool too. Maybe that. Yeah. I don't fucking. Man, yeah, I haven't seen anything about this. It yeah. just got announced like last, yeah, like crazy. like this week, right? I think. Yeah. Uh, mm. On the on the internet. But, uh, Mike, right. what's your pick? Oh, it's my turn. Right? <laughs> yes. Yeah, Let's get going. Mike, Let's get uh, Mike, My last pick is actually Mike. Like some... Mike. It's my turn. Like. Yeah. Last year, it's something that, from last year that I missed last year, somehow. I don't know. Maybe copies didn't make it to Japan. I just got it used already. But uh, it's an L.A. band, I think. They're from L.A. And they put out an album on Shit Kicker Records. Um, which I don't know if that's an L.A. label or not. I don't know. It's a great record. It's a great cover-up, too. Which I think was done by someone from Rashomon. Kohei from Rashomon, I think, did the artwork. Thing. Yeah. Artificial joy. Artificial joy. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. Great stuff. I know uh, this is new to me. Man. I probably played it a few times. Got it this week. It's great, man. It's like can 
I know it kind of manages to like weave in and out of like different styles, like but really like fluidly and like smoothly without like being jarring. It's like sometimes it's like it's a little bit like you know pogo punk, like maybe like the Sad Boys or something like that, and then it kind of goes a little bit more aggressive with the music, a bit more hardcore. And the vocalist is amazing, man. Like, I don't know if like you know she goes from that like more like higher register, like Dino from Dirt or the Sad Boys, and then she'll like slip into like more of a kind of snarl, like really like. Like naturally and smoothly, it's, I know, mate. It's it's hard to do because usually that's kind of jarring. It's like ah, just stick to one style, you know. But like she does it like really, really well, and uh, I thought that was pretty great. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's um, it, there's a modern modernness to it that I feel like they phase out of for a little bit and then like come back into. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. Like um, uh, and th they do all their songs are pretty. Un I feel like they're they're kind of unique, you know, in a in mm -hmm. a sense. And all those people they play in a bunch of bands too. Oh like, yeah, that's yeah. not their only band. Wow, yeah. like Andy's like, they're in a good shit. and shit like that. And... Yeah, there's people. That, yeah, and they're all play in different. Uh, sh I, uh, the drummer also plays in Hot yeah, Load. That's right. Yeah. And, yeah. Fuck yeah. And um, this, man, this is great. Man. Like no, no, those people that. They, they it's, this is a great yeah. record. I don't like, like yeah. I didn't really see anybody talking about this too much last year, but man, this is fucking great. This will definitely have made my like list if I if I'd have bought it last year. It's, it's really good. Didn't that get a Japanese release yeah. too? As well? It was released on CD by Break the Records, who do Break like, the Records, yeah, yeah, yeah. And Death Side. They put it out in Japan, yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. on CD, and they did a split single with Skit Class too from Japan. So yeah, yeah. Shout out to mm -hmm. the homie. I mean, it kind of looks like a. It kind of looks like it'd be like a synth record, though. You know what I mean, or a something bit, like yeah. that. Yeah. Um, I think there's another guy from Mexico, like. Oh, what is it? Sound? Well, it it, it kind of sounds like it's, like a little bit like. I know, like it, I, something something on yeah, Ireland. Maybe. It's, it's like, like it kind of goes like I said. It kind of goes like smoothly from like kind of like Hagar the womb. To like more pogo y stuff, to like more like aggressive left stuff, like subver subversive right, or something. I just it just kind of flows through like different styles, like really, but yeah. really like seamlessly, like just super, super well done. And like her vocal style, it's uh, it's kind of hard to pull off to change like the pitch of your voice and just not have it sound like ah, just stick to like that one style, you know. It's like she does it really, really well. I think it's great, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's so funny because we were talking about sad boys and pogo y stuff. So like I so was imagining it sounding like post punky or something just by the artwork. Ah uh, it's not I mean there's every now and again you might get a little tinge of but it's definitely not post punk. Not no. Is it it would just be like on effects. Yeah. Yeah. Anything, yeah. You know what I mean? yeah. 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 Artificial joy. Yeah. Hundred okay. percent pure joy. It's funny because last year we were, it ties back to Tom again. Because he did this record, like the last survivors from Japan, like Tom did oh, the yeah, 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 yeah. the like mm -hmm. the demos and and the the, the, the collection, right? And mm -hmm. the, the the singer yeah. of the last survivors, like did the like the the blurb in Japan for the like the Japanese like version of this, and he's a huge yeah, fan. Wow. He's a huge That's fan it. of this record, yeah. and he and he, cool. I could tell. I, I read his blurb, and I could see that he was like. Um, he was having a hard time describe, describing it, yeah. you know, because it's not it's not easily pigeonholed into a, yeah. into a box. So I could tell by what it, he'd written that he was like. I, I think it's cool that they're yeah, doing yeah, that, honestly. It, it's because it's, worth it's the like you know, too, man. it's good yeah. shit. If you're thinking about like, you know what I mean? Like if you're thinking about how to describe it, I mean that's a, that's a, that, that's an important thing to provide to people. Yeah. I yeah. think you know, like. Well, he said he he. Also, he did kind of really focus on like the vocals and like how amazing the vocals were about like how they go in and out of like a couple of different styles, of, like really fluidly. Uh, yeah. Great, great record. Great record. Pick it yeah. up. Good shit, man. Good pick, man. That was, yeah, it was a fucking great record. Yeah. Artificial Joy, man. LA band, right? Mm hmm. I think the vinyl was kind of limited, though. Like, I don't know, man, maybe like 300 or something. But, like, um, it's out there. I mean, you know, it's uh, it's out there. Hell, yeah. <laughs> it's you. <Me? laughs> it can only be you. <laughs> it can only be you. <laughs> All right, I'm going to pick this one. Speaking of my homie Bango. 
he uh, was playing this record for me once, and he and I was just like, "Oh, I've never heard this." And then I heard it, and I was like, "Damn, this is pretty cool." And then I was thinking, I'm like, "I feel like I've heard some of these songs," and it's because uh, my girlfriend Karina, she plays this, she played me this record a couple times, and I, you know, one of those things where I just didn't give a fuck about it or didn't even care to check it out this band and then i was like okay this sounds cool if i if i ever see this in person like maybe i'll pick it up you know like i don't know how much it costs how much it goes for but it's interesting enough it seems like they have you know a bunch of records out and maybe i'll appreciate it more now like i'm ready for for something like this and that's this fucking band Wingo! Wingo! God, i did not see that coming. <laughs> my girlfriend has that same fucking record, dude. My fiance, that same shit, dude. <laughs> well, so I didn't, like, I don't know, Danny Elfman. I had no idea who that person really was. What, bro? That's a dude that runs the show. <laughs> and that's what I was going to say. Is when I, there's a song on this shit that I was like, damn, this shit sounds like those Simpsons. What the fuck? And then I looked it up, and it's like, oh, this guy did the fucking Simpson song, and then like Nightmare Before Christmas. Hell yeah! And I'm like, he's got cuts. What the fuck? <laughs> he's got tracks, he dude. <laughs> Yo, but this got some cool ass melodies oh, yeah. in like that weird '80s way, like you know, like only Devo could like type shit. Like these, these fools can write really weird, quirk, quirky shit, and then do that random bullshit that just like makes it sound really nice and beautiful. <laughs> And I was like, damn, it's crazy because I opened it up and I looked at the, I looked at this and I was like, damn, I've been seeing this shit a lot when I'm listening to records. The a and logo. And then I looked, I looked, and then it was uh, my Joe Jackson. I had a Joe Jackson record that I was listening to. And I'm like, this is fucking cool. I like it. It's catchy. And it had this thing. And then Karina, she had the police, the first out police <laughs> LP. And it also had this fucking thing. And I was like, what the fuck? This is like Clay Records. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy. Oh, yeah. Of like 80s crap. You know what I mean? Like, I don't fucking know. Like, <laughs> it's fucking sick. And I'm like, damn. <laughs> You know, they were onto something. Like, they knew what's up. And, like, I think a lot of it has to do with also the recording quality and the production. Like, it made everything pop so fucking well. I mean, I don't know about... I'm only a lad. Okay, whatever. <laughs> so, they have they have a lot of records. Lot of, right? They have a lot of people in the fucking band. Look at this. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. Devo style. And then... Like a Scott. Like style. a football team of dudes. Bro, like, <laughs> these are crazy. <laughs> I love the Dickies. Oh, the Dickies are. I, you know what's funny? Yeah, you do. I just bought a Dickie shirt off of uh, Jeff. He bought a Dick. I bought a Dickies t-shirt. Oh shit! <laughs> off of Jeff. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> One of the fucking greatest, yo, the Dickies. Hell yeah. If you invite me back to the next show, I got five records to pull out. It's going to be Dickies. Going back. <laughs> Those first five records yeah, yeah. were so fucking cool. I got at least five. three. Yeah, for sure. Keep going. Keep going. It's like the Stranglers. It's just, it's cool. You can yeah, yeah. Right, man, I'm, I'm, more, I'm sorry. I'll get more. <laughs> no, dude. <laughs> and then I'm going to, and then I'm going to sell you back your shirt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, dude, I need it back. <laughs> so if I, if, right. I, if I were to, like, you know, 25. if I were to get one Oingo Boingo record, what <laughs> would it be? <laughs> that, that one, right? I, I guess. That one. All right. I'm on it. Yeah. That's, that's, good one. that's the Do thing about have, like, Oingo a Boingo. Weird... I know that Danny Elfman and that... I, I know that Danny Elfman and that band are like famous, but I couldn't name you one song. Like, what's an Oingo Boingo song that I would know? Um, well, I'm gonna tell you, you, listen to the the song "Only a Lad." <laughs> it's oh, like that's, okay. okay, that's the title of the record too. Only a lad. Okay. Only a lad. Listen to that song, and it's gonna sound familiar because you've heard Oingo Boingo already. 
but it's gonna they sound refreshing that... in a different way. It's almost like hearing Blondie for the first time, like listening to a full Blondie record. Uh... Or like you've you've heard the radio song so much, okay. and you understand, but then you hear a different song that's like, what no, the I fuck? It feels Blondie familiar. Man. In that sense, they have this one like real sus cut. Yeah. It's like I like little girls, da da. And it's like I've heard that song a million fucking times, and it didn't occur to me how creepy that fucking song was until like <laughs> I was older. But I was like, dude, that's like that's the most famous Oingo Boingo song that I can think of, and it's as sus as fuck. But they got tracks. It's like, yeah, you know, I'm like, god damn. <laughs> I didn't mean to bring everyone down, but like, hey man, this band sucks as fuck. But yeah, that's the first song on the record. <laughs> is it? Oh, it's, it's also, that is also on that. I start you off, dude. <laughs> what are you telling me? Pull you in, dude. Yeah. Fuck. They got to keep you interested. Well, he was trying yeah, to say, yeah. well, I'm only a lad. Yeah. Like, so it's yeah. okay. <laughs> anyway, let's move on. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I'm really good. All right, God. Dead it. Man's Party. Is that is that another Boingo Boingo? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. That's a that's a better song that. title. Oh yeah, <laughs> dude. I love, I fucking love that song. Anyway. Check it out, man. It's it's cooler than I thought it was gonna be. Right. That's the way right. I'll put it for sure. That's but it, yeah, it gives you that same feeling kind of like I when you listen you. to when you listen to a record where you've heard a fucking famous oh. song all the time on the radio or something, or like mm. I don't know, it's a song that gets played and it's so burned out and you kind of hate it. And then you listen to the rest of the shit, and it's like, damn, there's some cool shit. Maybe like the Runaways may, might have something kind of oh. similar, you know, effect. I feel like with Cherry Bomb or right. like any any big band, really. I feel like a lot of big bands kind of they get that kind of dealt. Like Thin Lizzy, I think is a good example. Boiler Back in Town, like yeah, you know, a bunch of people know that song, but a bunch of people don't fucking know the rest of Thin Lizzy. And like everything that's else, like you know? for sure, like one of their. I would argue and be like, that's one of their it's weakest tracks. Like, it's a yeah. most famous one. It's not great. Yeah. It's okay. Yeah. All right, Dan, what's your what's your last record? All right. The last one I got was one I put on today. Um, I'm like, I have okay, there's a, a little part of me that is holding out fucking hope that Totalatar will come back. Cause I fucking love that band. And like I was gonna talk about uh VR Leeton. I was gonna talk about this one, but I mean, we all know and love this fucking record. It's a fucking banger. But as far as like Poffin projects that kind of hit close to that mark, my favorite record that he's done post Totalitar, I think has been this this explosive. Oh, okay. Oh I yeah. It's it's fuck, fuck yeah. This one has fucking tracks. It's got a lot of the same feel as late uh Totalitar. So I just like I know they have one after this one too, but this one I always go back to. I'm like this one is my favorite that they put out, and I think it sounds more akin to like what they were doing in later Total Altar. But I haven't heard that one, dude. But this I, one's a fucking front you know back why, banger. It's got, why's that? It's because Lanchi from Totalitar, who's to me is the signature sound of the band, he's he plays guitar in the band. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, easily. He doesn't it's play any other pop him. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. like that duo right there. Like it's the yeah, core yeah. of the fucking band, and it like it like really just comes out in the recording and the song structure, the delivery of the vocals. Like they they work together so so well, and you can tell like especially on this one, this record. I think this is like the closest they've gotten to replicating that sound, even though they're doing something a little bit different. But let's be honest, like Poffin yeah. uh, bands always kind of have that fucking Totalitar flavor mm -hmm. to it. You know, it's like it's like Totalitar diet or Totalitar zero or whatever, or like, you know, keto Totalitar. <laughs> but this is the fucking goddamn closest they got to that shit. And I fucking love this record. If you haven't heard, heard it, I, I can't remember what year it came out, but it was on uh, Phobia Records. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This fucking record's clean as fuck. So if you haven't heard it, spin this shit. Just be like, yo, this is probably like the closest you'll hear to like the Total Atar record they never came out with, I think. How many and records I want, do I want they them have to keep, they keep more, man. Three? Three? Three albums? Two? Three? Yeah. Yeah, three LPs, man. That's three like LPs. impressive yeah. too. Oh. 
I I've only heard the one that looks like the Totalitar <laughs> right here. Yeah, that's the one I, I think have that's like the latest that's one too. <laughs> Honestly, I'm not gonna lie, yeah, like this one. Yeah. That shit is fucking cool. Like I it's it's cool when there's like a DB band that's like exciting and innovating in a way. Even within that same little block of bullshit, of like shit, like there's still yeah, yeah. there's still more is what they're kind of doing, you know what I mean? And I think that's fucking cool because in a genre that seems so limiting, they can still kind of like, you know, like make their mark. And I feel like the only other like wave of stuff that's done that is Inferno. You know what I mean? Inferno and then yeah, all the yeah. bands kind of like kept going after that, like our soul and like I think kind of catastrophe, maybe. I don't know. Yeah, but, catastrophe. Like, I would say, yeah, I would say Heritage. Just, yeah, yeah, all of that stuff. I think all mm-hmm. of that shit is so fucking sick, and I think that's why people will always look to that side of the world. Yeah, for like, I mean, what, what to do next? <laughs> you know they, I mean? they innovated that sound, and they, they, you yeah. know, they're still crushing it. You know, I talked about that band Crunch yeah. the other day. Like the Crunch demo just came out, right? And I, I think like those Swedish bands, they have, they always have that that old Swedish punk in there which makes it different to like D-beat that comes yeah. from other countries. It has like, like that melody from like old, like s- Swedish punk in there. And that's, that's what makes it different. I think. Um, yeah. Just the melody. Yeah, kind of that different. element of silliness too. You know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, like a lot of, a lot of like, um, you can kind of divide it. Like, you know, older Totalitar songs are very much like uh, straightforward, uh, visceral D-beat songs. Later Totalitar like around like um i guess halfway their career they have more jumpy fucking guitar styles like dang 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 which like a lot of people are trying to replicate nowadays and influence they influence a lot of bands nowadays which mm. is super sick because like you know that's that was like that and fucking zz top was like the whole basis for obstruction that was like our fucking mo was like zz top <laughs> meets fucking totalitar and that was it <laughs> You guys are like the Texas, like in a way, the Rocky and the Sweden. Yeah. Somehow you guys have that, but like Texas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Danny the Texan, right man. You know what I mean? <laughs> that's tight. Yeah. So, like, you know, that's why we connect with that shit. So, well, we connect with Japanese hardcore so well and, and Swedish hardcore so well. Yeah, there's, that, like, there's that rock. There's that rock kind yeah. of backbone in that ring. Fuck yeah, man. It's fucking sick, man. That's uh, cool, dude. I fucking hey, we got the modeller. Hell yeah! Cheers, y'all. Cheers. Cheers. Hey, All right. Man, just I gotta, I gotta check that one out. I've been, I've been slacking on them. I wanna, I need to. I get confused, not confused, but the, all their record covers kind of look not. The same, but like it's like which one? Yeah, which that's part I mean, of it, man. That's Harris's fault. Well, the talk <laughs> started it, but then Harris's like kept it going, and then everyone's just like, okay, this side of the world, the music is all that matters. The artwork is gonna suck. Yeah, yeah. I, I have I have a head of Tees record that I almost fucking talked about because I was like listening to a lot of head of Tees. Um, I can't remember who the hell I was talking to about this, but it was like PX Thirty is the newer band. But the oh. I think it's like the singer or the guitar player had a piece. Yeah, they rip. Yeah, and they're fucking awesome. And they're supposed to be like, oh shit, that's my boy Chris. Uh yeah. We like to fucking rock and roll in Texas. <laughs> like, like, yeah, going back to that, like Head of Tiss was one of our favorite fucking bands. They never played Chaos and Tejas though. Fuck man. I was I know. So yeah, them. that's and what Chris dropped. just says. They they uh Bro, I have the fucking flyer right here on my wall. The show that they were supposed to play was fucking uh, Doom, Kriegshog, my old band Wild Tribe, and fucking like uh, Kill Talaki and I, uh, Ice Turismo were supposed to play. Like, <laughs> like fucking uh, Ed Atis was supposed to play that too. We fucking oh, opened that show, and that shit was fucking insane. It was a great fucking show, man. Uh, we got to bring that back. Well, not yeah. we. Someone I know. To bring someone in Texas. The younger generation have to do like the new like yeah. Chaos in Texas, right? Chris, I know you're watching, bro. Check out PX30. They're the shit. PX30? Yeah, they're awesome. All right. Jeff, bring it on home. What's the, the last record of last record of the day, of the night, the morning, the afternoon? All right, so I really hope that my last pick, one, I hope it's not long-winded, and two, I hope it doesn't, like, 
bring down like the whole shit or whatever, but I just want to talk about this. So like in the most recent uh, Sorry State newsletter, um, I wrote about this record, um, which is like uh, like the 1985 government issue record. It's uh, uh, the fun just never issue, ends. Right? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, 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 uh, yeah. Government issue, the fun just never ends, and um, I don't know. It's it's funny because I'm kind of like a like later era government issue like apologist i guess you could say like i really love their later records don't, yeah you too cool. the That's best, great. The best. Um, <laughs> i really, I really do like, like there's something special to me about their later records like this one's really great too um that's this is my like favorite. after that one you know Dude, yeah that's my favorite okay that's so a fucking yeah. cut, dude. that's a cut interesting that you say that because for me Crush. For me, this is the one. Oh, okay, okay. Which is no, this is yeah, this is the self-titled from '86, um, and it's and it and it's funny because like I'm going to tell a story. I hope it's okay if I just do that real quick. Go ahead, man. Um, but uh, so, so so me and my best friend in high school, his name is Randy. Um, we kind of like in a very childish way decided we were going to get into punk together, you know? So we kind of got like one summer, we both got leather jackets at the same time, start studying them out and shit. And um, one of the first records I got into, like when I was getting into like punk and hardcore and stuff was like uh, the four, seven inches on a 12 inch that discord put out. It was like the, like, you know, it was like teen idols, SOA okay. youth brigade. And it had the government issue record on there. And uh, I really loved government issue. And uh, one year from my birthday, Randy went to this record store and uh, there are these older punks in the record store and picked up this record and were basically like talking shit on it. They were basically just like, oh, that's when government issue like got weird. You know, it's not like they're old hardcore stuff or whatever. But Randy, even hearing these dudes like bash this record still was like, whatever, dude, Jeff loves government issue. I'm going to get this record for him. And this is that same copy that he got for me on my birthday when I was Beautiful, like 15 man. years old. Hell yeah. And, uh, Beautiful. And when I... And when I first heard it, um, I think it confused me a little bit because it was kind of like this weird sort of blending of moodiness and aggression. And like at first I was sort of like, I don't get this, you know, but then I just kept coming back to it. And at a certain point, it just kind of resonated with me. Um, and it's sort of like this blend of like sort of uh, softness and melody and like sort of dissonance. But then also like there's still a little bit of the hardcore in there, but it's just like they just... I don't know. The songwriting just feels like sort of sophisticated, but also like sort of like aloof and sort of like weirdly distant at the same time. And I, I don't know, man, it's just like, it's a record that like I threw this back on for the first time after like hearing that other government issue record. And I was just like, man, this still just like hits me like it do. And I was like a young teenager and it's like, and I love the hardcore stuff too. Don't get me wrong, but like there's just something special about this period of the band. You know? Honestly, I feel like they just don't, that era, like, just doesn't get enough, like, love. That I mean, they were an incredible band. And I, yeah, like, I was actually going to sure. bring this up because, like, I was, um, like, during, like, lockdown, like, not this show, but, like, just on my YouTube channel. Yes. I, I, yeah. I had, like, I had Tom on for it's an interview. So and, like, and, like, he, he used, like, one of the things I was going to say is just, like, oh. Tom Wilde. Or... <laughs> Tom Lyle is just like, especially in this period of the band, he's just like, he's one, he's like his tone and his playing and the stuff that he wrote. He's one, he's like one of my favorite guitar players ever. He's incredible. For real. Uh, I had him, I, I kind of interviewed him. We just did like, a, it was just me and him like talking. And I think I'd asked him to like pull out some of his favorite records, blah, 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 blah. And like, I had a bit of a moment because like those, um, like, <laughs> like it's like those, like, especially like you and Crash. Like I love them like so much, and like, I was telling him this right, and like I could tell that like he was quite touched by what I was saying, and like, I started kind of like I don't know if anyone knows, but I was like kind of crying. It's like it was like man, why am I crying like talking to this wow. guy? But like I love those records like so much, and just like talking to him about it was just like fucking, it's amazing. Man. It's like, uh, uh. that's so honestly cool. I like a band with a with a catalog like that you know too i think it's you know it's when bands get to develop and shit but that band fuck like dude i feel like that band should be on more like on the back of flannels like you know what they i mean were like, too this, weird. Yeah. like they just they, like you sure. know like it's a, it kind of like almost like fell into like a weird 
place where like SNFU was, I feel like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. They were, were the yeah, that's, what I was gonna say. that's one of the interesting things about that's one of the interesting things about government issues that like, I feel like they existed in that early era of the discord thing. And then like, whereas all the other bands broke up mm. and sort of like formed bands that were part of the whole revolution summer thing or whatever government issue just continued. They just kept going and sort of evolved and stuff. And like no other bands really did that. It's funny though, you know, you in, know? It, you know it, it, the punk scene was supposed to be sort of like open-minded and like, and, you know, and like there's a band like government issue with us totally doing whatever they wanted to do you got like john stab wearing like w wearing whatever he wanted to wear you've got like all these like heavy rock influences people are like oh, i don't know this is a bit too weird for us and it's like fuck jesus christ it's like, you know, everything like, <laughs> doesn't have to sound the fucking same you know like it's you know it's uh they were so creative and like amazing songwriters and like they really yeah. cared about the songs awesome. and the music and the melodies and everything um they're what it's all timer all time band for me absolutely amazing and to make an effort. That makes also, me so like, sick. Yeah. Fuck, that's just sick as fuck. Make an effort. The reissue, affordable. J Rex. <laughs> no. <I don't> know. <laughs> yeah. They had. They came to. Ryan, they came. Ryan Baker on guitar. Yes. Yeah. Ryan Baker. Bad religion. <laughs> it was funny because yeah. like they came. <laughs> exactly. They came to England like in the late eighties, and they had a really bad car accident their van crashed right and um, they couldn't continue the european yeah, sure. tour and like tom was like saying yeah man like fucking like we pl they play with like napalm death in england and stuff and like tom was, like fucking napalm death were the fucking best amazing and, like, like, you should yeah. follow him on instagram he's great like he posts records like every day and like he's he's got like a real oh. like, eclectic oh taste. i follow him trust me <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he actually he actually sent me a message saying why haven't you invited me to come on this? And I felt bad. Well, the reason being is because like he's such a, a unique character that I couldn't think of anyone that would like would come on with him. But if anyone wants to come on with Tom Lyle from Government Issue, yeah, <laughs> like we talk about he's clearly the world, 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 baby. Yeah, uh, he's a, he's an interesting guy. Uh, but, yeah, uh, yeah, that's oh, a, yes. that's a that's a great way to end. One of the best bands from the punk world of all time. And, you know, they were really into the damned. And, like, actually, Tom was saying, like, he didn't like how um, John Stab like, always got, like, compared to Dave Vanian. But it's kind of a, a little bit unavoidable, like, but because th there is some similarities there. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. That yeah. makes sense because, like, the damned is, like, my favorite band of all time. So, you know. Yeah. And especially for a band like that to have like such a diverse catalog too, you know, from that era. Kind yeah. of. That's a great way. That's a great, <laughs> that's a great last pick. All right. I'm going to just like, uh, tell everyone about like next week's show. It's like Dave Brown. I think Dave was in career suicide, I think. And he, he maybe he has like a record. It's a Canadian show next week. All Canadians. Dave Brown, I think he was in career suicide. He hasn't. Is that a record store now? Maybe. Fuck yeah. Jason Flower, who does like Supreme Echo mm -hmm. Records, has been doing a lot of good shit. And Mike Mike Woodford, regular regular <laughs> guest on the show. So next Friday. So uh, uh, Dave Brown, uh, Death Mutations. What's you that? That Death Mutation seven inch. That that thing rips. Is that a Dave Brown thing? I think so. <laughs> okay. okay. <Yeah. laughs> Man, I love this delay. I got used to it now. Now that I'm finishing. <laughs> I hate it. I hate it. <laughs> all right, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for all the comments and stuff in the comments. It's always good. Hey, you gotta check it out. This is what it is. It's eat, sleep, sorry state newsletter, analog attack. <laughs> you know. <laughs> Cheers, dude. <laughs> on, it. on that shit. <laughs> Cheers, dog. That's Thanks, Mike. Great. Thanks for having us back. We'll stay on for a little bit after the show. Someone said that I should like I should record like the after show part as well and like have it as pay paid content. I was like, nah, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Now nah, that's when we talk shit. You should. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah, when we, we talk shit, bro. You know, that's when we kind of end? completely go. Not really. really. <laughs> no. That's where all the best compliments are, honestly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs>
yeah. right. as always that's where the money is yeah. that's where the money is yeah. thanks for tuning in uh check yeah. out the new a lot of new records tonight right uh yeah some new stuff yeah shouts uh, out leo shouts out fucking unlawful assembly like those fucking records are fucking big they even just came out like a with another demo tape uh what's the fucking name of that band i was jamming the fuck out of it i think it was a korean vocalist um i Ooh. can't remember but it's it's fire everybody check that shit out all right here were my backups this is what save I them for like, next week when you're back on again <laughs> oh sneak peek <laughs> giving us a teaser I haven't even heard this. I'm yeah, gonna lie. <laughs> Make it up. Yeah, <laughs> Damn. Fuck okay, yeah. Right. You're dropping us with the cre- end of credit scene, dog. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Until next time, stay healthy and stay clean. See you next week. Same time. Oh, yeah.